On this episode, I sit down with my buddy Landon. Landon's start is one that might be considered a stereotypical story of a small town Texas guy. It's anything but that. In this small town, he was an outstanding athlete. He loved his big truck, listening to AC, DC, remix with JC, and anything in between as long as it was cranked up loud. He's got a six pack, and not like the one most of us have, it's probably like an eight pack. He has hair that would make anyone with a mullet jealous. But also, he understands the value of communication, creating balance, and he really embodies the work hard, play hard mentality. We also talk about basketball for about 20 minutes at the beginning of this episode, so feel free to skip two bros broing out. Let's jump in. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a moderately good podcast. And here, before we get started with uh, my very special guest, we've been planning this for a minute. So um, I'm so excited to have him on Uh, uh, really quickly. All like all the cool pictures, all the videos you see, um, what makes this happen? the, The backbone of my whole podcast is my guy above average Joe Pro. So if you're looking for wedding pictures, you know, real nice pictures of your dog, you know, whatever you're into, uh, contact my boy Joe, uh, Above Average Joe Pro, um, and get, you know, get some pictures done. I mean, everybody's doing it, so you should too. Uh, And then shout out to my guy Mo. Uh, He has a a mobile app, mobile detailing app. Uh, It's called the Go Bubble app. Um, and it's mobile detailing that's brought to you. So you get on the app and then you order a detail and then they come to you apparently. So it's kind of like Uber of detailing, something like that. And then, uh, our new sponsor, my guy, Jaron, um, he is on Instagram as uh, no name originals. Um, and he does really nice, uh, dyed and bleach clothing, cool clothes. Uh, he just did a custom pair of pants for me that, I'll be wearing in a, a future podcast. And so uh, go check him out. He does really cool stuff, custom stuff, uh, um, made-to-order stuff. So uh, uh, No Name Originals on Instagram. Uh, and with that, my what? My what you said. <laughs> oh, the butlers. They're horrible. Turn my watch off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> with, that, with that being said, um, I would like to welcome my friend Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Okay, really quickly. So how did you, because your real name is Gregory? First name is Gregory. Yeah. Okay. How do you know that? Because you wrote it on the form, man. Oh, did I? <laughs> yeah, I probably did, man. Okay, so, I don't, so I don't so advertise why, that a lot, but yeah. Well, okay, so was I not supposed to, is that okay? No, though? yeah, totally fine, man. I'm not hiding behind it at all. It's just <laughs> so very why, few people know that. From Well, the, I, did, I didn't know that. <clears throat> so I was curious, like, so what, how do you go by land and what, what brought, like, the What's the story behind going by Landon? Yeah, it wasn't my decision at all. It's, it's pretty oh, really? entertaining, man. I've just been landing forever. My parents started calling me that. They And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, why did you name me something? <laughs> you don't want to call me, you know? By the way, I also think I also think three names is weird. Like, what do you mean? Like, first, middle, and last. I mean, I, you need a last name, obviously, right? And you need a first name, but what's the deal with the other one? What's the third name about? I don't. I've never even like, really thought about that. What's the story that. about that? Is it's? I I, I kind of want to think it's mostly like your parents. Okay, so what? You know, so I also love one name, but you have to be like Madonna or Seal or something like that. Well, yeah, you I, know mean, what I mean, I mean, you're, you're, what is like? What is your your? Th- it's like Laz Laszlo. What's what's your what's your thing you go by? What's oh your... man, that. Man. Am I not allowed to talk about? No, that you can talk about. <laughs> no, yeah, that is like it's just crazy, man. At forty years old, that people know that know a nickname that I was given in high school at like sixteen. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm saying like that's yeah, when I so. think of one word names like that. Yeah, that so work. that was my nickname in high school, and it actually came from a uh, uh, a vandalism situation. What? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, we were at the school one day and. Kind of, I guess it was lunch or something like that, and you know, we, this is a school that was built in probably the seventies or eighties, whatever. So this is old school, man. And we had some chalk, and we were like, "Man, let's just put our, let's just write our name everywhere or whatever." And I'm like, "Man, if we write our name, it's just basically 
calling Give us ourselves away. that. We're yeah. giving us away, right? So I put my num my initials L A and my uh, my sports number throughout high school was twenty. But I don't write twos with the the loop, man. I, right. It almost looks like a Z. Right. So my buddy over here is like Lazo. What the hell's Lazo, man? What are you talking? What's that or whatever? And that was probably, man. I think I was probably a sophomore or something like that. Um, but my buddy, man, Joe Jose Ortega. Okay, and I haven't talked to this dude in forever, but shout out to Joe wherever shout he's out. Shout out to Joe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it stuck. And then it and then that that kind of nickname kind of went into like. You know, my buddies that didn't play sports would, like, paint their chest at, like, LAZO, like, basketball and baseball games and stuff like that. Man, so it's pretty cool. You got good friends, and That dude. was awesome, yeah. man. And, you know, I couldn't tell you who all the friends were that did that and also couldn't tell you who the when the last time I talked to these guys were, too. So it was all high school friends? It was, they were high school friends, man, and, and they were, like, you know um, – year maybe my grade maybe a year younger and whatnot yeah. like that but good old boys dude because you're you're sure. you're from texas right yeah from a little town called mount pleasant it's um about two and a half hours east of dallas like it, there's no you don't it, to get there probably i mean you're breaking the law of speed and you're getting there in five hours but now that with the kiddo how, how many like how six. many people <laughs> yeah how many um, people live there uh, we were there not too long ago. I think the city limit sign says like 10,000. Okay. So 20 years ago when I was there, who Six. knows how, maybe, maybe I graduated yeah. with like, I want to say I graduated with somewhere around a hundred, 150 people or whatever like that. Maybe a few more than that. Maybe a few less or whatever. Yeah. Like three, a four, a it was four, a, but it should have been probably a three, a yeah, at the time. Close. But w when you got school so spread out like that, we're just kind of a place filler for four A's and, yeah. and, um, they had a couple good years in certain sports, but way more bad years than good years. For well, sure. I mean, I I really, you know, if I had some friends that in high school wrote my nickname like on their chest while I was playing sports, I would definitely reach out to them and tell them thank. Thanks, <laughs> like, man. Like, Appreciate yeah, it, guys. Yeah, th thanks for hyping me. And up. you know what sucks at the time? I probably didn't even like. No, but I mean, you're at like the time in high school. You don't. Well, yeah, I was like seventeen, and I was like these idiots out here or whatever but now i'm like man these are some good dudes man like but that's painting what... their chest baseball season is not always like warm you know it starts in like february so um they, so whatever. they do this for every sport uh i, mean, I what, don't like, think they did it what all did you play you play football i uh, no, i didn't play any football i didn't play an ounce of football um basketball, basketball and baseball um were my sports man and and i was better at baseball but my my, I guess ultimately I was better at baseball, but man, I loved basketball, dude. It was just like, I loved it. You keep up with NBA now? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Totally, hundred percent. And you're you're a big Mavericks fan? Yeah, dude. Doncic for three, baby. Let's step back. Hey, well, what what's up with Porzingis? What's uh, up? He needs to be traded. I'm, I'm over it, man. <laughs> hey, I'm hey, over you know, it. like, listen, he's a unicorn for sure, and he's got a skill set that other people don't have. You're seven foot gigantic or whatever right he's draining threes and you can dribble and stuff but like he's kind of like mr glass you remember from yeah. uh, unbreakable you oh, know yeah. sam jackson like just stay in the game man it's play a full season he, you know? here's 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 what so like i i'm like an underground like if you made me pick like new york or la like i'd pick new york mm -hmm. like i like new york i like i like you like the knicks better yeah, yeah. than the lakers or you yeah, like, like if you made me if you, if you, if you made me choose between knicks and lakers I'm like a secret Knicks fan. I mean, I'm a. We, we don't have. Are you to, like? We don't talk about that. I'm a. I'm a Rockets fan. We don't have to talk about it. Though. We shouldn't talk about it. Probably not. <laughs> but I'm an underground Knicks fan. Uh -huh. I just I like if you made me pick the energy of one of those right. And so when Porzingis was playing the Knicks, like I feel like he did get hurt, but he didn't get hurt as much as he has in Dallas. So right he, and like and when when they let him go, I was like, what in the fuck? And like it's kind of like did they know something that nobody else knew? Well, you know I mean? if like he got hurt as a Nick. But and I think Dallas tr uh, was he a free agent? Or did they trade? No, they traded trade for him. him. Yeah. They traded for him because they got Timmy Hardaway in the deal too. Mm -hmm. But um, and he didn't play like a full season when he was on the mat. Like his first season, he didn't really play. Yeah. And then he got hurt. Was two years ago in the playoffs and was killing it in the playoffs, and then got hurt. But that's the thing, man. Like. If, you, if you're good for a series, but then you go down, like, what good really are you? Yeah. Like, you got to be sustained. You got to, like... I mean, Don, not, Don's just over here playing on one foot. Come on, man. One shoe, Zion's blowing out of shoes and finishing, you know, the Final Fours and stuff. And I don't know. I, like, I want Porzingis to be way more than he should. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I grew up with, like, 90s basketball, man. Matumbo, Elijah Wan, yeah. David Rod Rodman, all these guys. And, like, these dudes are, like... These are hustlers, man. These are... 
I, I would love, call them thugs, but like David Robinson was like the most jacked guy ever in the NBA, right? Um, and I just want Porzingis to be a little, what he's not. A little, yeah, man, come on. But you it's, know, like you know, like that. I I really miss, and we can move on from basketball, but. Uh, we I can stay, man. I'll stay all day. <laughs> I'll stay all day. I, I miss, you know, like when you go back and you watch all those uh, ESPN 30 for 30s, like about like the Knicks and the Pacers and the mm-hmm. Bulls and the Detroit and stuff like that. And just like how they bad play and the bad boys and like they're just elbowing people in the face and like there's no fouls and stuff like that. I just miss that kind of basketball. You can't I like, play that game today. No, not you at can't all. can't play that game not, today. Not at all. And that's fine. <clears throat> But like I miss that bas- that if you made me pick an era of basketball, like I would be like go 90s back to that. basketball, man. Because I mean, you could go back to an era where people <clears throat> are shooting through like you know uh, orange uh, peach basket hoops, yeah. underhanded, or you can go to what we have now. And I just want I want nineties basketball. That's what I prefer. Like I, <clears throat> there was some early two thousands, like like Jason Williams, one of my favorite players of all time. Sure. Like handles Jason Williams or whatever. Um, but I hated the Kings, man. I just did not like. I did not like. Because they always beat the, the other way. Because they had They a were squad. good, man. They had like Weber, Divot, Bl- Vadi Divot. They had Peja. Right. They had um, Chris Weber. Chris Weber. Yeah, they had Mike Chris Bibby. Weber. Bibby. Bro, Bibby is swollen. They, they have had, you seen that yeah, guy? Yeah, lately? he's like Jack. <laughs> anyway. uh, they had uh, Doug Christie. Doug Christie. Oh, they had God. a squad, man. They, they could. They would just play. And like it's like one of those teams that you want. You don't want to beat your team. and But you, you kind of want to like, for me, like, I just want to see Jason Williams pass the ball. That's all I cared about. Like, yeah. do something awesome. And you knew it was going to happen because yeah. he was just flashy like that. Um, but they weren't my favorite team, man. Um, but, yeah. Did you watch uh, Last Dance? Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Jordan? I watched it a bunch of all, times. Multiple times. Yeah. So, Jordan's your goat, right? For yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not what – I mean, because, and back to our, our thing, like, LeBron, I don't think – I don't know – listen, this is tough to say because he's just a beast, but – like, I don't know that he would have survived in that era. NBA is full of whiners right now. And I'll be the first to say Doncic is a whiner. Like, it's, just part of, it's just part of what the game is now. <clears throat> it's kind of like, um, you know, when, when James Harden is playing for my team, he can do no wrong. Right. But as soon as he left, I was like, that guy – sucks like you know like yeah like he's just drawing yeah. fouls all the time right you know what i mean and but right. it's it's it just it's what the nba is now and i feel like um i hope that it swings back in more of a a direction like getting a little bit back less, towards roots a, a little, little bit just a little just a little bit back the other direction you know it would be nice for uh a large uh slower basketball player to be relevant and not have to be DeAndre Ayton or like, uh, you know, like it'd be nice to have a Patrick Ewing or like, imagine Shaq trying to play right now. I don't even know what that looks like. Well, because all like, and I was just about to say that, dude. Like, if you're playing the five, if you're playing the center position, like, and you're the coach of that team, like, you better get ready for your center to start launching threes. Right. Like that's what they do now. Right. Everybody pulls up from half court. Right. right? Like, and I feel like a lot of players don't have the green light unless you're like. Steph Curry or something like right. that, right? But like, I, I, and if you can shoot threes, fine. But like, what happened to the low post spin move? I know. You know what I mean? Like, what happened to that? Like, hashtag where's the low post spin on, move? Right. Like dunking on people. Like, I want to see. I want to see big guys. Like, you know, I also don't really like it. Like when Giannis takes the ball the length of the court and just dunks all over everybody. <laughs> Like I want to see a, I want to see like, you see the ball move I want to see bit? some handles. I want to see the ball move. I want to be, you, I know, I, I want to be, fl- I want to, I like flashy man. You want to see basketball? I do, I do. I don't want to see and one I, guy dominate a game. And I, I'm saying, unless maybe, it's Doncic for the mask. Yeah, sure. Like, right, you yeah. know, uh, like I, I think it's one of those things. It's like maybe what we're saying is, is that in that '90s basketball, it's like you saw all of basketball. All of basketball was there because it's not like there wasn't whiners. Right, and it wasn't like there wasn't like flops and the, the, the but it, but it also had like the tough guys and the grittiness to it and stuff like that. It was like all of what basketball. Well, and and it was and and guys, you know, as much as I love Jordan, mm-hmm. he kind of he kind of fucked up basketball a little bit because there wouldn't be the guy the one guy sure. that wants to score sure. if there never was Jordan. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because that's no. where Allen Iverson came from. That's where Kobe came from. You know, and so I was never a huge like. Kobe fan only because I was never a Lakers fan right right like to me 
if you're talking about the like top three, you're you're talking about Kobe, and you're talking about LeBron, and you're talking about Jordan. Like, right. You're talking about those three guys, um, and like the respect is there. But I also was like, it's okay not to like Kobe. I just, I don't didn't, like, I just, he just wasn't my favorite. I don't player, I'm like. Right? I, I don't. I I don't like Kobe. I've talked. To, I've actually we have talked basketball with somebody else, and I like. I love what he did for the game. Yeah, but I, but like even like in in my opinion, uh. He didn't move the game much farther than Jordan did. Well, I think he was too close to Jordan for right. that, right? Right. He was but, too fresh. But Iverson, or moved, at least... my, Iverson moved the game. <sighs> but you could say good or bad, right? <clears throat> LeBron moved the game. Gian- Giannis is kind of moving. Dantich is going to move the game. Like he's going, like right. he's going to redefine how someone plays that position. Mm-hmm. So, like those are players that I really like. You know, am invested into and like and follow. Do you and, like players? So you're a Rockets fan. Yeah, you like players when the Rockets Harden leaves, and you're like, man, screw that guy. I mean, do you still like those players? Like, like, so my favorite basketball player of all time is Dirk, right? Mm-hmm. Mavericks fan, whatever. And I often was like, obviously, he never went to a different team. Who would have ever let him go to a different team? But if he, I asked myself the question, like, if if Dirk would have been in a different team, or if if Luca goes to a different team, am I still gonna like that player? You don't have to. I don't. I I I don't. I don't know the answer. Like I want to like them, well, uh, me, but ultimately I like them the most because they're a maverick. Okay, well that's you know fine. What I mean? My all-time favorite basketball player, like, I mean Jordan is is probably, I mean he really is. But the guy that like I have followed really his because I was young when Jordan. I mean I was yeah. still a kid. Yeah. So I just kind of grew up with this guy. But a guy I followed from the beginning of his career until now that I always keep up with. It's Carmelo Anthony. Okay. I love Carmelo. The Laker. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, no. I mean, and and no one. I think really appreciates Carmel like he gets the same raps and things but I think in this second half of his career it, when he finally decided to embrace that like I'm not going to always be the dude and I'm, I'm I might come off the like it's been awesome it's yeah. been a, it's it's blossoming yeah, yeah. but now that he's a Laker I'm just kind of like whatever whatever yeah yeah you know what I mean but like you know I mean <clears throat> secretly I'll like what's you know I'll keep up with what's what mellow like stay in mellow sure. you know sure uh, yeah but uh anyways <laughs> Everybody got their basketball. A little sports field. center for him. Yeah, right like there, dun, right dun, 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 that dun, was dun. a thirty for thirty right there. Um, yeah. So uh, mm. talk a little. I mean, like, uh, so you um, are a gym owner. Yeah. Right. And how long have you owned? How long have you owned the gym? Man, we opened up uh, the gym uh, CrossFit Round Rock 2010, May of 2010, and so do. Do you want to give a quick shout out and like you know? You know, a free session or anything? Like, do you want to do you want to do any promotion for it? Yeah, man, come see us. Come see um, us. Got a lot of coaches that will take you through free sessions. Probably not me. But no, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding, man. Yeah, come see now, us. Now, so just come in and ask for him specifically. Just come yeah, in and come, say. It, literally, Landon said he would give us free sessions. We're here. No, Where but we no, but, but, but my see, understanding, he's the owner, and what he says goes. But no, but seriously, it's the exact seriously, I that. I've known Landon for a really long time. <clears throat> we worked at 24 together, and um, and. I have always had this great respect for you as a trainer and us working together and stuff like that for all the things, for all the things, the way you ran your business, um, how you were as a trainer, stuff like that. So um, if you know me or trust me, or even if you don't, um, if you live in the Round Rock area and you want to go somewhere where you're you're really going to be taken care of, um, like y'all have a family over there. Like you can just go to the Instagram page and see all these people that just love being there, all shapes and sizes, all the people. Um, it's a place where you're going to get a great workout. You're going to be taken care of personally. And most importantly, you're not going to get hurt. And if you do get hurt, these guys know how, right. I mean, your ultimate, probably part of your ultimate goal is for nobody to get hurt. Right? Totally man. Right. Like, like our whole thing, first of all, thanks for saying all that stuff. Yeah. Man. I appreciate it. No, I um, mean, look, I, <laughs> I, I love that setup. I love where y'all have taken it because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, at times, moments, currently, maybe not, CrossFit has gotten a bad name. Totally, man. Okay, it, it, and so I'm saying what y'all do there is not, is, it to me, is different. Well, I think, first of all, people, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of guilty by association, right? Yeah. CrossFit round round, CrossFit. Right. You know, CrossFit Central, these are also my boys down downtown austin too so um but yeah they um crossfit's a brand no different than uh, nike or uh, right any other big brand out there right so um and every gym out there is 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 totally different than the other one based on you know who runs it 
how you program, what your protocols are, how you pay, how you, what you charge. It's all, that's all up to the gym owner. So it's affiliation, right? We pay um, an affiliation fee every year to use that name. Other than that, we run it how we want to. So if you've had a bad experience before, what I would tell people is not to get turned off just by the name CrossFit. Right. right? Give it a shot and go see, man. You may run into some great people and you're going to run into some, some people that, don't it's know like, what the hell they're doing out it's, there. It's either, like anything, you know? anywhere, right? anything, anywhere, man. You, you know, and this could be said about doctors or I- anything, right. anything out there. You're going to get good with the bad. So, right. um, I mean, we saw that at t- just working at 24. <clears throat> well, and, 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 and oh, God, man. <laughs> I don't know if we have enough time to get into that, but, uh, yeah. Um, but, I mean, but, but you, I was a young trainer. Totally, man. You were I was, a young trainer. Well, I often joke too about like when I was, when I was first hired at 24, like, it was like, I mean, people are agreeing to pay us in the gym, but I might have been stealing in the beginning with how crappy of a trainer I yes. was. You know what I mean? Like, no, 100%. I stealing, but now I feel bad about oh, yeah. providing that service that someone paid, you know, 50 to 70 bucks for. Dude, like, <laughs> I think about the people when I first started training, like, RIP, I'm so sorry to these people because you can, you can read all you want to, about mm-hmm. the body. You can you can learn all the organs and all the bones and where everything goes and how it works and how you use it and blah 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 whatever, and then when that person kind of gets in front of you and you're trying to program build kinda and like you're right. trying to make a complete workout and if even if you've worked on your <laughs> own like and you're just doing fucking you know pecs and traps or whatever you're like you know now you're doing it for somebody else like if you do it on if you mess up yourself or whatever you do for yourself is one thing yeah now you're, you're somebody's paying you to do that. And you like you just don't know until and everybody's different and like it's there's a lot of guinea pigs in the beginning, man. right? And, and you're these people are paying you, and when you first start out as a trainer, like they're kind of like your personal experiments, right? Like what I'm not on do? purpose, not though. on purpose. It's not you know you're not going in. Being it's like, kind of like ah, let's see what they'll it's do. It's kind of like lab but in school. It is. It's exactly like what you're, it is. you're like a frog, you're, and I don't know where the tendons are, and we got to figure this out. I'm gonna cut you open, <laughs> and I hope I don't hit your heart. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Although I think the frogs that you cut open in school are already dead, so yeah. it doesn't matter, right? But I mean, but still, but yeah, you're 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 trying to like you're trying to figure out how to build good sure. workouts, and, and you're and the the experience is should be um, a, a very valuable aspect because how long have you been training? Oh man, two thousand five. So how long? And how long has your wife been training? A couple years after that, maybe thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, I mean, and you so just we got we thirty years between yeah. us. So, and you just come across so many people and so many different types of things and so many situations and so and so and now you're seeing you probably see a lot of the same things over and over again, same similar problems. Yeah, and right? you're like, you know, I, I've seen this before. I know how to deal with this. I know how to do it. And and above all else, you know this as well as any other trainer who who's done it for a while is you can teach a mon- monkey how to teach somebody how to squat. Right. It's not about. It, it is in the beginning, it's not about or it is about teaching someone how to move properly, right? And maintaining that too. But you got to find somebody that's willing to say, Hey, more than anything, I like you as a person, I trust you as a person to where that person will do really anything you ask about them and, and they enjoy spending time with you, you right. know. Because for you know, how many, how many sessions have you had that turn, feel like therapy more than anything? Oh, I mean, most. I mean, you know, a lot of them, I, I, okay. I, uh, I, so my boy, Pat, you know, my boy, Pat, right? He's a strength and conditioning coach. Maybe he worked at 24. Doesn't okay. matter. Um, he does strength and conditioning shit, mm-hmm. right? I can't do his job. Right. I, I, I can't yell at people. I can't, that's not my yeah. mode. Yeah, right. Yeah. My mode. The old drill sergeant trainer there. Yeah. My, my mode is that I'm a great motivator with people that just kind of d- don't know where to start or how to get into it, yeah. stuff like that. And like, I'm, I feel like that I'm best at making it comfortable. And that comes with talking through a lot of stuff. Well, so that's, that's it, man. You hit the nail on the head. You got to make someone comfortable because somebody walks into, especially at a CrossFit gym, 24 hour yeah. fitness was tough in its own right because everybody's in one, in one big room. Why? And it's like, so and there's it, mirrors everywhere. Like you can't hide. When right? when they walk into your gym, they can be th- thinking, "Is this another CrossFit like a CrossFit that CrossFit idea gym?" Yeah, right. Is this um, are these people like going? Am I going to fit in? Like, I mean, there's going to be so much doubt. Like, I feel like it's easier to walk in the 24 than it is to walk in your gym. I think no? it is, but I also think for 
Uh, yeah, yes and no. I in, think that, that, in the psychological part. Exactly. Of it, right? But because you're like, man, do I belong here? Do I have to be super fit? Because it's no different than how most people see CrossFit is a couple different ways. They'll see it on TV, CrossFit Games. Right. That's no different than watching the NBA Finals. Right. Like the best of the best, right? Yeah, That's you, you not what you're hey, When you go to the Y, you're not going to be doing that. Never. <laughs> most of the stuff you see at the CrossFit Games, you'll never do. And you'll never want to do. And I don't mean okay. you don't want to do the actual movement, but you're not going to want to do what it takes to get that movement. Okay, and and not to like, I just I hope this is you're cool with this in this game perspective. So you used to compete. Mm -hmm. Tell me like what level you got to, how far you're from the top to to show people how hard that is. Yeah. Is, okay. is, is that a fair question? No, yeah, it is a fair question, and and um, let's see how if, hopefully I can paint this picture pretty well. Yeah, so just I do it started, for like at CrossFit for dummies that don't understand. Yeah, so I so so CrossFit there's there's two types of CrossFit. Okay, there's competition, and there's fitness. Okay, and fitness slash lifestyle slash whatever you want to call that, but that's the everyday person's CrossFit. That's right. what I do now. Right, work out. An hour a day. If I get interrupted, I may be out there for an hour and a half or so. Right. But I'm not training, you know, specifically for three something. to four hours cumulative a day. And most of the times, because I was never a sponsored athlete, I was still running the gym to, you know, put food on the table and pay the mortgage and stuff. So I had a, I would have a, a block of time from probably between one and four that I would get out there and get it all in. And I had coaches and I had programming. I, I didn't do all that stuff for myself. Um, and it beat the hell out of me, man. Like it beat me how, up. How physically. old were you? This So I started this my last year. So how my CrossFit journey began was I started doing it from when I, I had trans at the end of 24, when you were yeah. 24, you had started up. Well, so I'd got introduced to it at the round rock 24 over there when I worked with Remember Eric and Sandy and all these guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I worked up there with them, I started doing it because one of the other trainers was had just gotten certified. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, you got to come do this thing. He was an ex-Navy guy. And he actually ended up opening CrossFit Texas over here. His name is Brandon Mushka. You may remember this oh, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he oh, actually now, And really quickly, <clears throat> before you did CrossFit, you primarily did like, would you say bodybuilding type workouts? Like what were you working? I would say that, yeah. Because yeah. I would do like back and ch or chest and biceps on Monday. Yeah, it was a very yeah, you, split routine. It was yeah. bodybuilding routine for yeah, sure. Yeah, you're, you're on Saturdays before you go on the boat, you're like getting bands and pumping up your muscles shit. Dude. <laughs> yeah, before I would go party on the weekends, I was taking like, you know, explode, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and doing some push ups and some dips on your coffee table so you could like get, like, look jacked. Yeah. That's what mattered or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's, hey, that's what matters we've, we've when you're in your We've all been there. Man. Yeah. Um, we're all trying to survive in the world of dating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Terrible. That's a different subject, man. The online dating now, that's a thing. Like, I. I you never I, experienced that, right? Never. Not okay. one time. So let me tell you something. <clears throat> in my opinion, and then we'll come back. In my opinion, you're not missing a goddamn thing. Yeah, dude. Because it, sounds, it looks like mostly work to me. Well, it's look like, in so? the short in a short period of time between like my divorce and before me and Aaron like reconnected, mm -hmm. I had a handful of experiences and they were all incredibly terrible. Yeah, and I was just like, "Who does this?" Well, it, and I was like, "I'll just be alone." Like this, it's cool. Yeah, I'm fine with like, myself I'm good. and you whatever. Know what I mean? Well, what I hear about it is like it's it, it's. And I get that it's strictly based on looks. Like you're attracted to this person. I'm not. I'll be. I'll be the first to admit. The first time I saw Adrian, I wasn't like, man, she got a great personality. How do you know that? You don't yeah. know that from seeing somebody. You have to be physically. Attracted you have to be to physically human. attracted in the beginning. But like, there has to be a reason you want to open the present. Exactly. Exactly. Right? You know what I mean? Right. What I mean. <laughs> Yeah, we'll leave it at and, that. And, and, yeah. and, and a complimentary way, your wife's beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, you know she'll, what I mean? like that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. now do you want to come on the podcast? Right, Adrian. Um, yeah. It's a lobby for you to be on the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and so, um, but, uh, you know, I have I acquaintancely know her, and she's just as good as a person. And you can see it, like, from the way she is with your daughter, like, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, it's just like. No, great. she's great. Like, I, yeah. we certainly wouldn't be in the situation we are now without her. Um and we can circle back around to that. But anyway, but, um, so so yeah, so I started you, you get introduced doing, to the CrossFit in the back alley of twenty four, and then I got promoted over to Lake Creek. So then I kind of shelved it for whatever. And I was like, man, I want this idea that I want to try. And then a couple of trainers that used to work at Round Rock when I was there were now kind of in the Cedar Park, Northwest Austin area, and they were coming in. And I see these people like driving rowers around and doing all this crazy stuff and like like going nuts. And I'm like, man. 
this these guys are like coked out of their minds like they're going nuts right now there's no way someone works out like that so then i'm like man and so i start talking to them about it and they tell me about it and they're like hey go check out the website and so i'm like all right i'm gonna give this a shot you know being in the fitness industry i felt like i needed to know kind of yes, a couple get, of yeah. these different like things that are out there so if somebody talks to me about it i don't want to sound like a fool like oh i don't know what there's only because the, i, I feel, don't believe there's a cookie cutter way to for fitness yeah I and really i feel don't. like every good trainer mm -hmm. at that time was doing the same thing because yeah. I, I did crossfit workouts right. we did a lot of that stuff like in the gym if you weren't like if people are coming to you with something and you're not actively like if you dismiss it mm -hmm. like whatever it is like whatever the new fad is whatever and you don't want to do research around it then you're not growing as a trainer right because right. like because we're going to kind of i have another i have a follow-up question to this so but but keep going so well like, let me kind of condense this a little bit so so it doesn't take forever and people oh, get bored out of their time. mind I mean, but it's um, my podcast when so, you yeah want. so so i start dabbling a little bit and i'm like this is cool Cool, whatever and and um i'm like man i, I kind of like this feeling you get of like the competition part of it because like i wasn't competing against anybody else but like i would redo workouts and i'd be like oh man i got a little faster okay maybe do a little heavier maybe did a more little dopamine drop right, right a little bit right yeah. so you're like this is this is kind of like this is awesome or whatever um and i was also at the time, it, it was kind of a perfect case scenario. I liked the competitive part of it with yourself against others, whatever. Um, I liked that you could do it anywhere, right? Like I was, we met at a track lots of times where we, you know, body weight, right on the track, body weight. And I think this particular track had like pull-up bars. So fast forward to early 2009, like February 2009. And there's like a local competition. CrossFit Central put this on. Yeah. Called the Fittest Games or whatever. So I go out there. I do this. And like, hey, the people who place at a certain level in this, we're going to send to, it was up in um, Fort Worth, to this thing called regionals or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. So I enter this competition, tear my hands to shreds, like bloody hands. And, and you know, at the time I was proud of it. Now I think it's the silliest thing in the world. Like, you just got older. Post your, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Trying, but like even now it's like, if you start CrossFit, you're probably going to tear your hands, but don't post it on Facebook. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not it, cool anymore. It's not cool anymore, right? It, to be honest, it's probably never cool. Um, well, I mean, now, can we still post pictures of food? I, I mean, I got to say yes, because Adrian does it all the time. Well, so. But you know what? But I, can, I, 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 can I say I, something I about, so. can I say I something about so, her yeah. food posts, though? Yeah. These are informational food posts about, like, what y'all feed your mm -hmm. daughter, yeah. right, and yeah, what y'all yeah, yeah, are yeah. eating and stuff like that. Right, right. It's not like she's at, like, Uchiko, and she's sure. like, "Hey, look at this fancy meal." So I'm she's having. not bragging about it. I, I, yeah. I think I, I like the. It's food. genuine. Uh, yeah, it's I genuine. like. Yeah, what's what's yeah. hey? What's your intent? What's right. your intent? Well, so I'll be the first to admit, man. Like, I bought a Traeger like two years ago, mm -hmm. and this is the younger crowd's not going to care about this, but you're forty, buying a smoker's awesome, right? Like your dad, you're buying a smoker, oh, yeah. and you're like, dude, I'm I'm about to cook it up out here. I'm gonna spend all day on the patio. And I'll post pictures of ribs or so every so often. I don't do it that often because I don't cook them that often. But I'm damn sure taking pictures and sending them to my dad. And it's it's more of but like a I think that's it's more of like a like hey, I'm looking for a pat on the back for hey, my dad. Hey, look what I made, look what I made. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Look what I did, Dad. I got. It. I mean, I know I made a baby, but then I made these baby <clears throat> right, ribs. Right. And let's be honest, like I was involved in the baby making process. I don't know how much, like. I was I was given all the tools I needed to do to right. make that baby right? right, and you know, the 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 process of making the baby. You're done after that, yeah, for nine months, and then the wife. Well, and then and then, then you then, have a girl, and oh lord, and then and then now you get to do this for like eighteen years, right? You know what I mean, right? So so I go to this regional. Yes, I go to this regionals. Right, we'll circle back. No, again, no, no. Right? I, this is this is pretty much how every conversation goes around here. So just you're, yeah. You're doing so fun. so I go to regionals, <laughs> and that was like the end of the road. Like the top five make the games. Yada yada yada. And I did that was two thousand nine, and that was in May. So the first competition is in February. You get a couple months to keep training. Go to this next one that was in May. Right, and it was just like I was. First of all, I don't know how I made it at the first regionals. Just. The workouts probably had a lot. Maybe it was up my alley. Maybe not. Three or four workouts we did to get there. But then I go and I'm like, man, these are people who do CrossFit. These are real guys. I'm just over here. Like I'm like a poser at this point. Was that intimidating? Uh, like how did like what? The, oh yeah, of course it was because I'm like, what am I doing here? And that's really not usually my style so, at all. So but, so I was out of my element. But it's the first time I'd like competed since I was like 20. Yeah. In anything or whatever, right? Um, 
other than like college, you're competing for, with your boy, with your roommates and your right. boys for like who's going to get this girl, who's going to get her number, or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. But that's not really competing. Who cares about that? I mean, it is competing. But it is. Yeah. It is. But um, there's this no, was like your there's put, no your, losers though. Yeah. Right. There's no lo- and, and and at the time when I did this first regionals competition, like I was a loser. <laughs> but to be honest that. with you, ever because I because I didn't win. Right. Ricky Bobby, right? You're not first or last. Right. That was my mentality. And I think that mentality is good and bad, right? Like at the time, I was like, it kept pushing me. It kept pushing me to train harder, to get better, to worry more about sleep and, and, and rest and recovery and food and all this stuff, too. But also, it isolated me on an island. Um, and this, this continued for, that was 2009. So, oh, yeah. So, 2009, Adrian and I moved to South Beach in May of 2009. To work for William Coker. Crunch, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we were gonna say it, but yeah, for William Coker. I mean, he ain't exactly. listening. He ain't listen <laughs> He's not listening. Yeah, um, but yeah, man, we moved out there, and at the time, I was so done. What I didn't know, what, or what I thought was that I was man, twenty four. I can't handle it anymore. So I go out there, take the job at Crunch, and from the very beginning, it was just micromanaged. I want you to do it this way. I need you to go fire these ten people who I just met a week ago. They're gone. They're not members of this gym anymore. They're not employees. They're gone there. And there was some shady stuff going on. Like, <clears throat> like this gym, Crunch, had had a deal with these trainers that was like, listen, you just pay us rent every month. You can charge whatever you want. And then they were like, we need you to make this fitness department better. And I'm like, they have all the clients. They're charging whatever they want. They're paying $300 a month. You're getting three grand from these 10 trainers, and they're bringing that's in, a, that's a they're bringing in like 30 or – yeah. Like, and – and I get it. Like, I would have taken that yeah. deal all day. I'm like, y'all hired? <laughs> but then, so I didn't really fire him, but I went to him and it's like, this deal's over. Here's your new deal. You can choose to stay. Zero. Yeah. Nobody stayed. Yeah. Right? They're not doing that. They're just going to go train in some private studio. Again, can't blame them. But, so that fizzled out. We moved back in, um, like, right before Christmas, right between Thanksgiving and Christmas, the same year, like eight months later. And... um so I got back into the CrossFit stuff and the people that we were kind of, you know, dabbling with it before had opened up this little gym. And so we started training there, <clears throat> made regionals 2010, opened up our gym, <laughs> made regionals 2010. And between the qualifier and actually regionals, we decided to open our own gym. Didn't have any equipment. Didn't. I trained for that regionals with a set of rings and a kettlebell, which was the rings were involved in the actual competition, but no, no barbell, no no place to run, no wow. nothing or whatever. So again, go at 2010, and I'm like, this is the point where I'm like, man, I think I can, I think I can like, you know, make you some like noise you... or make some waves in, yeah, the, yeah. in this sport or whatever. So we open the gym, start doing that. 2011, I go back to regionals um, in Houston. Long story short, I went four years in a row. By the last year that I qualified, I was like, my goal was to make regionals. I knew I was never going to go any further than that. So the getting like competing at regionals was kind of like my victory lap for me. Yeah, you know, did like, you kind of going into it? Did you kind of know this is almost this is over? Like, I, I didn't know it was over at the time, but I knew I was never going to make the games. You know, how, how did, now, like, now, like, how did that like? How did you feel about that? Like, cause or like, kind of when did you come to that realization, and how did you feel about it? Once well, you, I came to that realization when at. <laughs> At the 2010 um, regionals, I still was like, like I said, I still think, I mean, I can make a splash. I can, I can, I can maybe make the next level. It's going to be work because I had glaring weaknesses. Like, I, I'd, I'd never done power cleans or snatches or squat overhead squats or anything like that. I had never done squats before, um, but I'd never done like full squat snatches. Gymnastics came easy to me. Right. Because, you know, I grew up being able to handstand walk and do backflips and all this stuff, too. So all the gymnastics, the rings and the body weight stuff, that was all easy for me. But the barbell was always kind of uh, an Achilles heel for me. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I was just knowing how long it takes to progress, not only in weight, but in proper movement. Like I was just I was light years away from the guys that were making the games and, and how, you know all those movements were never going to come up good movements for me were power lifting deadlift yeah. back squat shoulder press bench press i could clean okay but it was you know i mean it's better than the average person's right but it's not games level right and the same thing with snatching you know so um, and but and I, how old were these cats these cats had to have been younger than you at that time right they weren't your age were they they were the ones that were i mean the ones that are qualifying for like 
TV. They may have been, in, you know, they, were cl- they weren't like 10 years younger than me or anything, but because at the time, my last regionals, I was 32. And I think the guys that qualifying were probably mid twenties or so. But I mean, um, now you, you get like twenty one, twenty two. But there's a lot that happens in those seven years, yeah. man. Like you're still an animal at twenty five. At thirty two, you're like, I need an ice bath for my back. How old you are know? you right now? Now I, I, I'm forty. Now I'll be forty one in a couple months. Oh, bro! Like you don't like wait till you get to forty five, dude. I'm just trying to. I'm just wait till. You, have you lost your eyesight yet? I'm I'm, I'm doing the thing here and. If you're only listening, you can't see me, but I'm like holding my phone so far away so I can see it. Reminds me of my dad when I was a kid. Yeah, know? I mean it's go- trust um, me, it's, it's it's on the way out. I mean these are these are prescription. Like I mean that, <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. why yeah that's right. why I'm wearing them. Well, like at the same time, so so that realization for me was not easy, but also too at the very end of the day, I got into CrossFit because it was fun, and that's how I was going to go out. Not pissed off that I never made it and, and, and trust me like I got upset at myself in competitions when I felt like I let myself down um but the competing part was always it, it was filling a void and it got to be negative for me because that was how I was self-validating like yeah. I was like if I don't stay at the top of my game like all these people at the gym expect me to be the best they expect me to win the workouts they expect me to be able to do what they're, they can't they're, do they're the guys painting their your name on their chest well, exactly right you know they're the guys. well yeah. no like one year at regionals Adrian made all these shirts that have my name on the back and like there's 50 people in the stands wearing this I end up getting bronchitis halfway through it well I went into it with bronchitis but yeah. anything getting the point to where like the Good. medical staff is like, dude, you can't keep going. You yeah. can't breathe right now. Your pulse ox is like 90. That measures yeah, the yeah, oxygen in yeah, your yeah, blood, yeah. right? And it's supposed to be like anything below 95 is like bad. Let's let's talk about this yeah. or whatever. So they're like, all right, let's get out of here or whatever. So um well, you but know, it was like, okay. I still I still like to have fun. And the moral of the story is like I never I still wanted to have fun while I was training. And for me to have gotten so much better at it, I would have started doing like training movements that I wasn't having fun training. Right. You know what I mean? It's because really you had to. to. That. Yeah, I had to. Right. I didn't, I didn't, and, and, and you know, if that makes me not a true competitor, then that's cool too. Yeah, I'm good. Right. I don't care about that. Yeah. Right. I, I would, I always wanted to have fun working out more than I wanted to win the competition. And I won plenty of local stuff. I've placed in the top three podium, as they say, at your podium or whatever. But of that, and it, and it was just, it was fun. It was fun enough. I was, I was okay with that. Right. Uh, some, something I found like interesting, um, and and just so you know, you wrote this on the form, so I'm not you know, okay. Yeah, but you 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 said you're fairly introverted. Yeah, totally. Right, and like, um, and all the time I've known you, I have never thought of you being an introvert. Yeah, which which most introverts have to be extroverted, right, to survive sure. in the world. So like, I was kind of curious, like, what was what was the ba- what's the balance, or what's like you know. In doing these competitions, and I'm, I've got to think it kind of it is layer this layer of protection around being introverted or something. So, like, how did you it, did you use in that way? Did you were you balancing that? Like, what were you, what were you doing being such an introverted person, being out there so incredibly extroverted? Right. Like, it's one thing to like go in public, and it's another thing to be on show. Well, you know so I mean? like the last competition I did was at. It, it was in San Antonio at, I can't remember the venue, but it was, um, the Alamo Dome. it was not that big. They all, they had regionals there one year, but that place is so big. They it's, had to like it's, it's, close yeah, half it, of it yeah, yeah. to make it. You're not just like in the like, corner. Yeah, dude. And like, you don't realize that when you're, when you go see like a basketball game, well, they use half the court, mm-hmm. but when you go in there, like you, you go, I'm going to see a basketball game. You're like, oh, it's going to be the whole fucking place. No. And then you go in there and it's like the right corner. Well, and then like. During college football season, they're having like bowl games in there. Yeah, and they like open it up, and there's like a field, there's turf, and I was like, "Wait a minute, holy shit, what is this place?" Yeah, it was, it was. God, where does the Spurs play now? It was, it's the building right, uh, or that, even Coliseum or something. Maybe it's well, called. Well, so the, the they like, I think it's a venue for concerts and stuff like that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like the whole 360, and you're kind of down in the pit, yeah, the yeah. whole floor or whatever. So, and there's probably in 20, that was 2012, 2013. The next year was different, but in 2012, um, there's probably. 5,000 people there? Yeah. And I'm like, man, I've never had 5,000 people watch me do anything. And not th- again. Yeah, yeah. They're not all watching me, so I'm not right, right, by right. no means. But I mean, there's tw- 5,000 people that. there that could yeah. potentially see me do something. Sure, right? And the, to answer your question, the way that I got a, away with being able to do it is because, like, I knew my strengths. Like, I was going to be one of the better people at 
at muscle ups or handstand push ups or or pull ups or the body weight stuff. So I, I knew my strengths, I knew my weaknesses. Like I was never gonna make a splash on a on a squat snatch, you know, ever. Um but I had so much confidence in the movements that I would do good at that I I always felt like I belonged. I never felt like I was out of my place being there or out of my abilities. I, again, I knew I was never going to win. At the time, they would take between 40 and 50 people to regionals, and I was like, I'm never going to be top five. I probably won't even be top 10. But between 15 to 30, I knew I could fall there. And that was respectable for me because to get there, you had to beat out – few thousand other people right so by the time you got to that level you knew you had earned your spot but at the same time like if i would have gone in there expecting to win i would have felt like uh, just way out of place so like, whenever i said that i said that you know like you said you, you say you're introverted mm -hmm. but i never i always thought you're extrovert you smiled like real big no if you can't if you don't watch the video yeah. you won't see it so why did you smile like what, because what, it's true but like, i mean but like so so what it, what is that for well you? I, like, th I think it goes back to high school man i was very um i was i was again i hid behind i hid my my introvertedness with being good at athletics mm -hmm. you know and i think a lot of people do that <clears throat> right. right like if you have that talent like you could say it about music like a lot yeah. of musicians a lot of comedians you know what i mean sure like uh, yeah, they like, find this thing to hide like to hide behind if i'm really really good at this yeah. then nobody will notice that i'm so insecure about everything else well i was a different person on a baseball field or on a basketball court than i was in real life not in real life outside of outside of those events right like, i would be yelling and hollering and show emotion on the basketball court and then i was pretty like i was Just, trying to like straighten there i was pretty stoic most of the other time because I was like, man, like it was loud. It was noisy. You could, you could kind of come out of your shell. You, you felt bit. like you were allowed to. Right. And you were almost at, maybe it's a weird way to say it, but maybe at home doing those things. But like for me, I was always like, and, and not something I'm proud of now. And obviously now I don't care about it. Just, you know, based on presentation and whatever. I mean, I, I don't care what people think anymore at the time. I cared so much about it. Yeah. Like it was my thing in high school. Sure. Like, I <clears throat> cared what I wore to school. I cared how my hair looked. I cared that, you know, if I had like acne or something like that, I would like do go to all these extremes to kind of like try to make myself accepted. So you what, know? what changed that for you? What, what, what made that change? <clears throat> um, I, and, and I'm not saying I don't think that I was in high school, but I was just a little, I, I cared too much about what people think thought. So, what changed, man? Like, what um, what made you get to the place where, like, now you don't care what people think? Because I think that you, can we agree? If you were true, like the people that go, I don't care what people think. If you really do care what people think, and you're just saying that, you're not going to understand what I'm right, talking about. Right. When you truly don't care what people think, it's a very freeing. Oh feeling. man, yeah. You can so you, the you can you can be genuine, and the authentic version of yourself comes out. Right to where it's 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 kind of a no excuses attitude, right? Well, it's just like you, you. It's like you're just telling everybody, like, like, look, this is who I am, and I need you to either accept it or don't. Like, right. I, you know, I'm not, it, like, I, why, why I accept you for you? Why wouldn't you accept? But me in high school, me? it's not that way. No, 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 no. Because not you at need all. to. You want the. You want. You want to be accepted. You want people to welcome you with open arms. And you're like, man, if I do something, if I if I fart in class or something like that, yeah, everybody's gonna know about it. Well, and they're and, gonna laugh at me. And well, this it, could be written in my yearbook for. Ever, but and that's and what people are going to remember. Especially me in the environment we grew up in. So, like, I grew up in a town of five thousand. Yours roughly six thousand. Mm -hmm. Hundred kids in your graduating class. Dude. Mine had eighty-two. So, if you do something, everybody, knew everybody, everybody knows by second period. And not only that, like, I remember getting busted in high school for for drinking on the weekends. And <laughs> co yeah, coach calls us in, and he's like, "Man, what's going on?" or whatever. And and we told him or whatever. Wait, is your is your life like varsity blues? Is that where is that what we're going into? Like, yeah, I wouldn't see that. Did y'all roll out of the strip club at like two in no, the morning? No, 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 man. There was no st strip club. Was like forty five minutes away in a little town <laughs> called Paris, Texas. All uh, Paris. Yeah, I'm, I'm all sure. Paris, man. I'm sure the girls in Paris were very attractive. Well, I did I ever go? I don't know that I would. Would they have let y'all? Would they have let high school kids in? You think? It wouldn't have been that hard to probably get in there. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, with you. I, I mean, it, if you're paying to get in, they're like, yeah, sure. It, we follow the green, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, money that is. Anyways, um, go ahead. But yeah, like it was. Um, God, what was I talking about? Uh, what were we talking about? That uh, blues. Yes. Oh, so I go Sorry. in, and the coach is like busting you, and like. Like we call our dads. He calls our dads. Yeah, of course. Right, superintendent. That's, that's what you he do. Calls superintendent. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows everybody. So there's no there's no secrets if you get caught. Now if you don't get caught, you're good, 
right? But most of the times it was a small enough place that you, there's nowhere to hide, you know. Did uh, somebody always has somebody's talking? It's high school, man. So okay, so y'all get y'all get busted mm -hmm. for drinking. It's you and, and me, me and my best friend at the time. Yeah, okay. Not I was, he was my best friend at the time. He's still my best friend. Now. Okay, but yeah, um, we, we not we didn't RIP him. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, still yeah. he's still he's, best friend. Okay, so y'all go into the meeting. They call your dad's blah blah blah. When you first get back into the school, right? Well, when, that was not. We weren't. We were like. Did, they, did the school find out? The school found out. Everybody right? knew. Okay, man. so so what was the reaction? This is like our senior were, year. So were they like, "That's that's so like cool. our friends." I don't like, know that they were cool. I, they may have thought we were stupid for like, like getting. We didn't know how to party because and we got busted or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, it wasn't our fault we got busted. We kind of got ratted out a little bit. Um, <laughs> And that's cool. In high school, again, you're pissed again, off. At, again, a small town. Yeah, you're yeah. pissed off at these people for ratting you out, and then 20 years later, you're still good. You're still friends with them, so it, yeah. it's water under the bridge at this point. But um, like, I got way better stuff to do than worry about that, you know? Yeah. But at the time, <clears throat> the deal was, man, we had to like, we had to run 50 laps around the outside of the baseball complex before we could play another game. We also had a game the same day, so we played our games on Tuesdays and Fridays. Okay. Tuesdays were away games, Fridays were home games. So we're like, okay, cool. Starting tomorrow, Wednesday, you guys got to run all this stuff. And you got to do it after practice. So, like, practice ended at, like, 5.30 or 6, and we had to run, 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 or whatever. So are you just getting as many laps as you can before the sun go down, well, or are you going to get all 50? No, we, we until we could play again. We knew the next game was Friday, oh, right? okay. And we're like, man, we got to do this in two days. There's a senior party on Thursday night. Oh. Okay? So, <clears throat> and there was, like, five or six of us just went everywhere together. Senior parties, yada, yada. Well, we start running or whatever, and we, we figure out this is like 18 miles. And we're like, okay, cool. Well, our buddy puts his pulls his truck behind the fence. The fence was wooden, so he couldn't see through it. So he's one of us is getting over here while the other one is running here. So we were kind of making this thing to where we were opposite corners of the field because mm -hmm. he was driving us behind the field, so we wouldn't have to run, right? So he was driving us back and forth, right? He would drop me off over here, drive back around where my buddy was getting there. So he would get in the back of the, he had a forerunner at the time. I said truck. Well, our stupid, we are so stupid. The girls softball fields behind us and they're practicing the whole time. Right. And so <clears throat> they see us doing this and they come in on night two and we finish up and then they pull over here in the gator or whatever. And it's the softball coach and the baseball coach, or whatever. And they're like, so we got a little issue here, guys. How many times did y'all think that y'all actually um, <laughs> rode in the – and the guy's name was Adam who was carrying us. How many times did Adam carry y'all back and forth? And I was like, I don't know, twice, maybe <laughs> may, may, maybe thrice or whatever. And he's like, mm-hmm, all right, we're going to do 30 more laps. Something. Like add it on to the 50? Yeah, so we're at 80 now. So we're at like 25 miles when this thing is done. God, we dang. miss a party. We miss a senior party. We're exhausted. We have a home game the next day. We put in all this mileage or whatever. But so, – so I think – the point of that story and where all this goes is that like things like that, you know, they're they're stepping stones along the way. It, they, it, they build character. It, like, it, I, it, like I'm, it, I'm ex I love ex that that happened. Exactly, I love exactly that that what I was saying. And like you know, there's a certain like because we were kind of talking. I could have hid behind that. Yeah, you know, like oh, I'm never telling that story again, right? It doesn't matter. It's along the way, right, dude? I kept a I kept a calendar of the clothes I wore to school, so I didn't wear the same shirt in the same week. Like that's how much I cared about what people thought. Okay, so back and that's to, exhausting, man. Oh, it is. That's exhausting. Well, and, and you probably yeah. you probably know people that do that right now. Not not the calendar, but like, but they that care so much. They care so much, yeah. and it's exhausting, right? Right, and it's that. You know, like when you realize that it doesn't matter, it's a it's a huge like weight off your shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like in high school, I I I idolized acceptance. You know what I mean? Like that's what I was striving for. I think that's also kind of a thing of a small town I, that maybe in a larger school you can find acceptance in small groups. When in a small school, there's no small, there's not really small groups. There's right. the school, right? And that's it. Yeah, like there a, might be your grade, yeah, or there might be two groups inside, but there's not. A, if you're a small group, it's like three people. Sure, you know what I mean. It's sure. not like there's a whole group of nerds. Right, it's just three <laughs> right, nerds. Right, you know right, I mean? right, right. Well, and and so so going to college kind of. It's a whole new group of people, right? Right. So I went to junior college for two years, right outside of the, um, right outside of the, the town where I went to high school in. So I lived at home, the whole thing, and that was not that big of a. 
it was almost like an extension of high school. Right. right? A lot of my good friends go went home. Yeah, still went home at night. Yeah. Um, and I made some new friends there. Um, I got a job for the first time. I worked at a bank. Very similar like, experience. It's yeah. all we're doing, man. Yeah. And it's like, go to school. And in a junior college was, like I said, an extension of high school. I didn't do a lot of studying in, in high school and stuff. And I was able to make good grades and honor rolls and all this kind of stuff. Same thing with junior college. When I got to North Texas and I was 20, um, I knew nobody except the guy that I lived with. Right. And a couple of other randoms from high school that 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 were there, um, so we just went into it. We're like, man, we're just gonna kind of grab this thing by the horns and go. And that's kind of what we did. Um, and then fast forward another three years, starting at twenty four. Like, I didn't know anybody when I moved to Austin. I knew you remember Timmy? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I knew Timmy, and I went to high school at the time with Timmy's wife. They're separated. They're divorced now. But yeah. um, I um. So I knew them, and I was friends with them during high school and, and college and stuff like that. So I knew them, but I didn't know anybody else. I walked in, and uh, who it was a it was a dual interview with Justin DePriest mm -hmm. in Stonehouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're like, "Hey, man, like, what's up?" And I go in there, dude, dressed in khakis and like a collared shirt tucked in with like remember leather braided yeah. belts and stuff. And I'm walking in there with like some kind of loafer, probably, and they're like, "Dude." What's up, man? Like, I, and so every, just what I didn't know, and, and yeah. whatever and I was like sweaty, dude. I was like, I didn't know anybody, but I, I was like, what, what are, what are they? It's my first job interview, ever. It's maybe second, but um, you know, when you're back home, people hire you that they, they know you. They hire you because who your parents are, right? You got good parents. You, you got to be a decent, right? Guy. We've heard your name before. Yeah, we yeah. know who you are. We know your parents, and Apple can't far that fall that far from the tree, so. Let's go. Let's see what happens. And, you know, in their mind, though, if it doesn't work out, they'll just fire you. Whatever. Right. So I go in there, and I'm, like, a little nervous. And then you kind of realize, okay, cool, I'm I'm okay with this. Like, I'm I'm qualified to be here right now. I sent them in my stuff. I, I They asked me to come in. So, like, I was okay with that. I trusted that they were – they so what they saw on paper of me was cool. And we just started having conversation, and then it was – Hired, but then you get your first client, and you're like, "Man, now I'm on display." Right now, this person just paid for this, or maybe they didn't, or maybe they came with their membership or whatever, or maybe you're doing a goal assessment. Is that what they were Something called? Something like that. Fitness assessment, yeah, whatever, fitness whatever, whatever yeah, yeah, the yeah. different acronyms were over the years. Um, and you're like, "Dude, if a, I a trap?" But I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is. It is. It's exactly. Hey, what it is. FYI, it's a, those uh, free sessions are traps. <laughs> yeah, it's a trap. They, um, it, it wasn't really bait and switch, but it was like. It's, it was it, definitely bait. It, it, it's, it was definitely bait. It's free drugs. It, right. And right. then it's like, oh, I need some more. Sure. You know what I mean? And then, Depending on how good of a trainer you are. Right, right. And, and God, there's such good stories about good and bad trainers. Oh, but yeah. um, it was, it was, I would say it probably took me a year to come out of my shell at 24 completely where I was like, I'm going to be the same person for every, every, every client that comes in here. Every new person, every old person, whatever. It probably took me about a year. I mean, to do you that. you were you were gonna go like this is this is who I am, and if we're if we're gonna train, you have to like who I am, and, right. and some of not I have to like who you are, but like like if I'm not being my authentic self, then this isn't gonna work because well, I can't maintain that fake relationship. So with that's you it. It was be too long. It was too hard to do that. Because like, yeah, how many, what, what's your longest tenure client? Do you, what's your how long is the Ten, ten I was just about to ask you that earlier. Do you still have clients now that you've had from 24? Oh, yeah. Yeah, same for me. Dude, one of my clients was in my wedding when I got married, bro. Really? Yeah. He, yeah. He, he's he's like, it's my guy, Tom. Like, he's 15 years older than me. Mm -hmm. So everything that I want to test about getting older, I just tested on him. He's like right. my workout partner. Right, right, right. Like, and, well, so, and like, it's weird how mm -hmm. I push him to be better because I'm younger, mm -hmm. right? But he pushes me to be better of taking my overall health yeah. more seriously. Well, you know when I mean? we so so when we left to go to Miami, as far as keeping clients, oh, well, you kind of like lost that, everybody. Well, we right? lost everybody, but we came back quick enough to where we could get everybody back. Right, right. They were they were still, and you remember how it was at twenty four. You'd leave clients with hundreds of sessions. Right, you know, like hey man, it's close out. Right. Let's right. go. It was, it was there was a lot of uh, pushing. It, there was a lot of pushing. There was a lot of favors being asked from trainers, from fitness managers to trainers, trainers to clients, to clients, right? Because right? the fitness manager ultimately is working about the worried about the bonus, right? Right. Trainer for sure. You get paid on those sessions, but you're like, God, man. Like now, I'm like, at some point they'll say no, right? You know, and then what am I going to go six months with no paycheck, no commissions here, right? So 
But yeah, we 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 came back and we dwindled from probably we came back to probably between Adrian and myself probably twenty one on ones, which was good. It was yeah. a good start, right? You get twenty people paying up front. That's that's a good chunk of change or whatever at one time. But then you're like, what am I gonna do for the next three months? You know, because they're 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 paid up for you know yeah, thirty yeah. sessions. They're doing ten, twelve a month, whatever. Um, but we lost a lot as the gym grew, as the CrossFit classes grew right. and the PT went down, we lost a lot of those one-on-ones and they, they were just so used to the one-on-one idea that. Did anybody survive that? Do you have one, any? Class? I have one. So how long have you been training her? So it's a guy God, how and I actually, so his, I got started with his wife um, at, 24? at 24 in 2005. Okay. First year I was there, right? Wow. She started with another trainer didn't really go that well i call her up she comes in and then um her husband who's at the gym now paul and steph um her husband was training with sanchez Mm -hmm. john you Mm -hmm. know john right well when when he went down south south opens up he goes down there because he lived in butte or Kyle or something like that so he was like hey man i think this guy will be great for you You already trained his wife yada yada and this was pretty early on right like john started working with paul probably couple months maybe maybe three months before john left so it's pretty fresh and paul still comes he was, we did pt this morning yeah um and he comes to classes three times a week we do pt once a week and and it's kind of like the, it's it's like it's almost like an old he's almost like an older brother you yeah. know just like you said yeah. right um and you know he owns his own business so we talk about business stuff we talk about life stuff we talk about there's nothing i couldn't talk to this guy about you know and how and how much older is he than you He's fifty nine. Okay, so so, so twenty very, years older. Than so you. a very similar, older than very me. similar thing with me and Tom, yeah. and and I and I always give Tom credit because that relationship is just as important to me as people that are fifteen years younger than me. Right, you man. know what I mean. Right, and like growing those relations, people don't understand the importance of growing those types of relationships mm-hmm. and how great they can be. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, Because yeah. I'm assuming, like you know, I'm assuming at this point you probably talked this guy about. Everything, and he probably talks to you about everything, and y'all have a different perspective because he's a little bit older and you're a little bit younger. Well, and there's right? also stuff that you can talk to people like there's a trust there that like yeah. I can talk to you about this, this, this other client, this other employee, and and and, and maybe I'm not using names, right. but you're still letting someone like that in on your business and you, and you know how things are going, um, but you know it's not going to go anywhere. So you're cool with it. You're fine. Like, I can bounce this off this. He may have something. And forget the business. You own a small business. I own a small business. There's a lot of similarities there, right? Forget what we're doing. He's, you know, he's running his shop and I'm running mine. Two totally different types of stuff. But um, there's a lot of similarities there. Tell me tell me if this if this uh, concept uh, rings true to you, um, where your, your wife feels a lot of your voids in your heart, right? Um, you have to have a place for religion if yeah. you're into it, right? Yeah, yeah. And you have to have a place for these types of this guy that you trust. Mm-hmm. And not that you don't trust your wife. It's just it's a different relationship that she can't always feel it in the same way if you're if you're a Christian that she can't feel the role of God. Yeah. Right. And so I'm assuming that all those kinds of relationships are important important to you and you try to balance all those right well i think also too that i, I think that can only come with <clears throat> i don't know age if age is the right way to say it but i, I don't know if you're a reader or not I i'm i'm I, a i'm a i am a reader but i'm a listener i i, I, I do audiobooks I, I was about so do you have okay so i have an unofficial book club when the subject comes up do you have a book to recommend i do okay th- i do is this what you're going to talk about that book well no okay it's just so recommend the book first and then tell me your story so the book is called Sleep Smarter, okay. and it's written in in layman's terms where everybody can read it. There's another one that's called Why We Sleep that's written by a – I believe he's British, but he's a professor, and it's a tough read. So are you into sleep? I like sleep. Okay, no, but I mean like – Like I'll create a sleep sanctuary for myself to okay. like – Okay. Like I'll do all the things to better well, my sleep. Well, fuck. Okay. Yeah. So um, finish what you were going to tell me, and then let's come back to okay. sleep sanctuary. So, so – where was I going? Yeah, so I'm I, I was saying like what I was about to say only comes with age. And you were talking about relationships and what you need from, you know, your wife versus somebody else. And and for me, I only got to this place through experience and age because I'm not a read. You may read books about this, but either way, even if you read it before you put it in action, you may not know fully what it's capable of. But <clears throat> I don't need Adrian. I don't need my wife for every single thing. And that's or, too. Or and that's too maybe, much. It's that's, too much to ask of her. Too, it's too much like, to ask of anybody. You can't be. You can't be all these things, you know, yeah. like 
From... No, no one is, by the way. Even right. us, we're not. So you realize what what places people hold in your life, what what voids you need them for, and that's what builds a relationship. And if you and if you end up opening up to them and being real with them, not necessarily telling them why you need it. They'll, they'll figure that out. They'll figure out what place they hold in your life and what place you hold in their life. And I promise you with this guy, at least for me, it's way more than fitness. I right. hope, I hope for him, it's way more than, Oh, fitness I'm sure too, it is. You know? Um, and if it's not, then I feel like I haven't done my job. Right. Like if, if, if people only come to the, our gym for fitness and that's all I've given them, then I feel like I've failed. Yes. Like, or, or, or maybe our, we just haven't gotten to that place yet where well, I, it does take a little bit yeah, of time It is. and not everybody, op- not by, not everybody wants to open up in the they beginning. Don't. And that's, that's part of it too. But, and, and would you agree that a lot of the issues that people carry around mentally affect their fitness like greatly? For sure, man. You, because if you're, so I always kind of joke, you know, there's all kinds of nutrients and whatnot like that. Happiness is one of the major ones, right? Right. So if you come in and you've got, let's say you've got a weight loss goal, it doesn't matter if it's five pounds or a hundred pounds, right? Like if you're carrying something extra, it's going to be significantly harder to achieve that goal than if you're just a little happier. Just if you get something yeah, off if your you, chest, If you right? got to carry around extra weight mm-hmm. and a rain cloud. Well, exactly. <laughs> right? No, that's it, man. Yeah. If you've got that thundercloud over you all the time – and you're trying to lose 30, 40 pounds, like that's way tougher because you're there. That's a stressor that is doing a lot of stuff. Like, I don't know about you, but when I get stressed, my appetite kind of goes away. Right. Right. I don't drink as much water. I don't focus as much on sleep. I don't, I don't spend enough me time. Um, even in workouts, like I try to be fully into it, but if there's business stuff going on, I'm like, man, like I gotta, like I, I gotta be able to block this out. So, um, and there's ways that I kind of, cope with that and kind of look to turn to that but um so so what do you do like to like decompress so <laughs> over the last probably and we can we can roll this maybe into the sleep sanctuary yeah right? i think that so adrian got pregnant with tristan in in like march of 2017 i started reading this book the sleep smarter book sean stevenson's the author um not too long after that. So all this to say that I started doing all this stuff and then the kid's born and then it kind of of jacked it all up. Yeah. I kind of jacked it all up a little bit, but it was everything from literally every part of your life can affect your sleep in a positive or negative way. Right. So I bought into blue light glasses. I still do that today. I, <clears throat> turn that we, we used to sleep with the with the temperature in the house around 68 to 70 now it's like between 65 66 cold like so cold how yeah. come cold. because your body your body when your body temperature is lower you'll fall into rem sleep faster okay you spend more time there. and so you're doing colder in the house like more blankets like are you trying no, not really not really like i use one blanket. i'm generally a hot nature person anyway okay. so this was an easy one for okay. me getting your getting your room as black as possible okay um i listen to uh, white noise. They're not, yeah. Well, it's not white noise. It's like, uh, it's like deep tones of like, uh, don't get me started. On the no, 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 this... But it's a headspace app that I use that, and the, uh, the session is called doze and it's 500 minutes. So it's like eight hours of, of this, this music. And it's... so I, ha- I have headspace. So I have that. You got it. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. You got so it. I just use white noise. Like I just use a, like a white noise maker. Yeah. I, I'm doing everything else you're doing. Except I use a white noise maker, but since I right. have this headspace, I'm gonna try this. Yeah, it's do- and, and and there's tons of they have sleep casts out there with this dude with this brilliant voice. It's like just talk. It's just dude. He's just like coaxing you into this sleep, <laughs> and he's British too. So it's just, on the headspace, it's fa- right? Yeah, it's yeah, fantastic yeah. man. Yeah, but I usually hear his voice. I don't do sleep casts because if someone's talking to me, I'm trying to listen. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, gonna yeah. listen to him instead of just zone out. Yeah. But this other one lets me zone out. Like I'll and and so I bought mattresses. I bought cooling. We bought cooling mattresses. We I stopped sleeping as propped up. I sleep flat now. I stopped sleeping on my. I try to sleep on my back. Not um, your side. Well, I'll end up on my side. Yeah. Um, Do you use a lot of pillows. I use one, a feather pillow. Just, I, so I don't. I didn't spend any. I stole this pillow from Adrian's grandfather, 
It's like when you take the pillowcase off, it's got like stains on it. Yeah, yeah. But those, hey, those yeah. pillows are legit a lot of times. And I'll and I'll kind of like fold it. Yeah. If I need more support. Or well, less because or it, it has it has almost no support. Yeah. I mean, your head's probably laying on the mattress in between the two pillow. Fa- it, it's not too fluffy, right? right? Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. It's and the, to be honest with you, the most supported part is probably my neck. Right, and that's all. You you, know? That's and, all you really need, right? Because right? I'm trying to go for like like spinal alignment here yes. as much as yes. possible. Um, and our last mattress was a Tempur Pedic, and we went to God. That is, I, I wish I knew the brand or whatever, but we bought it like Austin natural mattress down off of like okay. a burn it or something like that. It's a little firmer uh-huh. or whatnot. Um, but yeah, it was, um, so all these things, even down to like, you know, how much vitamin D you're getting from the sunlight in the morning can affect the sleep for that night in the subsequent wow. nights before. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, what was the name of this book again? Sleep Smarter, Sean okay. Stevenson, and it's it's um it's a it's a good book, man. If you're into sleep or if you're having trouble with sleep, I've recommended it to a lot of different people. Um, like you know, w- w- not to get too personal, but like, you know, like having sex before you go to sleep really kind of puts you more into like a, a, a meditative sleep. I, state. I don't think anybody's gonna complain. Like zero I don't think, people. I are mean, people. Say, are, oh like, man, no, I don't want to sleep that I, good. Yeah, I'm not trying to sleep. I have to have sex before I go to sleep. I'm uh, not gonna do that, right? Who wants to do um, that? It, it wasn't necessarily sex. It was just an orgasm, right? So like, you, you don't have to have yeah, like, somebody else to do this. Yeah, like you if you're single, I mean? don't don't be like sacrificing. Damn, sleep. I'm gonna I'm not gonna sleep good tonight because <laughs> you know. Yeah, if you're single, man, you. You may be having the best sleep of all of us. To yeah. be honest with you. Right? Yeah, yeah, because you ain't got to um, worry about somebody else. No, there's yeah. not somebody to tell you no. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's not somebody to turn you try, down. Hey, try God, to tell then me it's, no. Then it's then it's high school all over again. Even when they drown, I'm like, how good do you want to sleep tonight? Yeah, you're like, don't like. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking out for you. Do you want like? I'm thinking right, of you. Like this is. Right. I, I'm, being, I'm trying to help you. I'm being selfless help me, as possible. Help me. This help is Jerry you. Maguire. Straight right. Up. This is Jerry Maguire. Right. I'm Jerry Maguire. She's whatever his name. Uh, is. Oh, oh Cuba Gooding Cuba Jr. Gooding Jr. Yeah, God, I can't believe I said that, dude. Boys in the Hood is one of my you, favorite I can't movies. How about your wife, Cuba Gooding Jr.? No, that's that's yeah. better. Oh, um, uh, so here, I got, I got, I got a question for you, and I don't know. We'll see if you have an answer. Um, what do you hate about fitness right now? Oh, I hate routine, and 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 like no, so you not, hate not working out every day. That's you, not what I'm talking about. I enjoy that, but like when I was training all those years. When someone gave me a program or a coach gave me a program to follow, I was, I was happy that I didn't have to think about it. But at the same time, if I didn't get something in, I felt like I let myself down, mm-hmm. and I felt like I had to do what they did. And they were they they were doing a great job. They were giving me all my you know spend more time doing the things you hate so you get better at sure, it and you yeah. become more well more well well rounded. Eh, okay, great. It, it's possibly true. But what's the point if you hate all the stuff you're doing? Yeah. You know? Um, so, like, after I started, stopped coming. And I, and I, tr- so listen, regionals 13 was the last year I went, but I still kept myself in competition shape 14, 15, 16, 17. The last competition I did was January of 2018. So, and I was still so into it that when our kid was born, like, I was sleeping on the couch. Well, let me let me let me you know let I mean? me just let me interject, and let me. So say, I hate the idea of having to do a certain thing every day. I write up workouts for the gym, so I program for the gym. People come in, they're like, "Man, I'm kind of sore doing this. Let's change it, man." Yeah, like let, let, this is a this is a it's a, a marathon an that educated. Not... Well, and, and I'll joke all the time too, but it's not really a joke. What I write on the board, we have these four computer screens that project our workouts, around, right? And I'm like, this is an educated suggestion at best. Like if 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 back squatting. If that hurts you, don't do it. Let's do something else. Yeah, I, back squat's not the only exercise I know. Like, right? There's there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. Exactly. Right? Like so. Get, hey, so you tell me all the things you hate. I'm still gonna find stuff you hate. And and <laughs> let me just let me just put this out there too. All you people from CrossFit Round Rock, like I'm not saying come in and like shit on all my programming. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. Hey, you go but, in there and you tell him. Yeah, you I'm say, not back squatting, bro. Today, you're, buddy. you're not the boss of me. And and people will joke all the time, but at this, I'm not worried about this at all because they wouldn't keep coming if they didn't enjoy. Yeah, it. Yeah, of know, course. Whatever. Like so, and, I, and, like do you, do you? So I know you said you like you kind of don't like routine or something like that, but like when you are writing workouts for like long periods of time and stuff like that, do you like it every once in a while? What's up? Like somebody will come in and write a workout for you. Maybe Adrian writes a workout for you or something like that. Or you're like, no go. Well, they'll give me suggestions or they'll send me stuff like Instagram. They're, you know, everybody on Instagram is super famous and super fit, you know, and, and, lo- and knows everything about working all out. of it. And, and so that's, see, if we were getting to what I hate about fitness, we would go that direction. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so I do hate that, that you can get advice everywhere, but like, 
personally for me, that's what I hate about fitness. What I hate about just the fitness world totally, man, is that everybody's on there. Everybody's got 50,000 followers, most of which they probably don't even know who they are. Like, um, but I, I, I have a couple people I follow, but it's, and, I'm not going to see a cool thing and be like, this is, this is, this is gold. You like, know what I mean? Like, you know, like you, you follow people that like, that you find that maybe do interesting things or something a little bit different, or maybe they're, they have your very same philosophy and maybe they're going to show you something right. different and uh, you respect them in some way. Like I'll watch anything, but yeah, I'm I mean, not yeah. incorporating everything. Yeah. I, you mean, know what I, I mean, I mean, I'm sure no, no offense to uh, CrossFit round, round. I'm sure clients have come and go, Hey, watch this video of this guy doing this thing. You're like, cool. But like, we got to do your shit here. Sure. You know what I mean? Like that sure. is cool. And I can appreciate that. Right. But like we have a, we're, we're running a different operation here. Well, you know our I mean? thing is community first, man. Right. Like, like it may be not first, but equally as important as, as, well, as the like, fitness part. Well, of it. Cause like, we know that's going to happen. Right? Well, like this is this, our place. A, be a, a success is not based on numbers. Otherwise you just stay with 24. Sure. Otherwise you stay in the corporate sure. circle. Like sure. y'all, I mean, and I think that's, what's really great. Like, I think I said this just a little bit earlier, like, you can see, you can feel that sense of community when you look at like y'all's Instagram and stuff like that. And so that's, that's what I'm interested in seeing. That's what I like seeing. That's why I like the post. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, if you think back, man, if you go back to that, like, and Adrian and I were just in San Diego a couple months back, the, the beginning of August. And so we were talking about crunch and, you know, we were talking about William and all this stuff and, and. Most of these people won't know who William Coker is yeah. or whatever, but these like, are just people. These are people in Landon's life that have been on his fitness journey. Let's sure, put it that way. sure. And Andrew's like, man, do you ever think about what would happen if you ever stayed with Crunch or, or, or continue to follow William? And I'm like, yeah, like we probably could have been. That was, that was 12 years ago. Yeah, you don't stay a fitness manager for 12 years. You don't no. stay a club manager for 12 years. You keep moving up. The at least that was my that was the whole point. That, that should be your goal. I do, right. and I was trying to move up. I didn't want to get complacent or content or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, we could be. We could be a totally different place in our life right now, but what would we be missing, you know? And the thing that I was missing with Corpo Fitness was the community aspect, yeah. right? Like, how many trainers on your staff did you hang out with? A couple? Right. Yeah. Yeah, like, I remember... My, my my friends. Right. I remember, yeah, there was probably there was probably five. Now, when I was just a trainer, yeah, I hung out with everybody because we all started at Lake Creek together. But when I was a manager, there's probably three or four that I hung out with, right? right? And um, my 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 best trainer friend there was um a guy who was probably not one of the more qualified book wise education wise from a trainer standpoint to be training clients but he had a certification which was enough i think it was like ace if you remember ace it was always yeah, the yeah. one that everybody was like this is such bs but it's the least expensive and it's accepted it get you in it'll get, get you in the door right that's it right and this trainer i remember hearing a time he was on like a like a free motion crossover machine and his clients like Okay, it's like I know we're working chest, but what's like the name of the muscle here? And I kid you not, I'm over here with a client, and I'm like listening, and I'm like, oh man, where? Oh, and in my mind, I'm like, this is a train wreck. I mean, I'm watching it happen. I can do nothing about it. And the 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 trainer goes, Ryan Honeycutt, you know this guy? Oh my right? gosh, yeah, you know him. And he's like, listen, dude, I don't really know the names of the muscles. I just kind of know what part of the body we're working. And the client's like, bro, that works for me. Here we go. And I'm like, because the truth is, no one cares about pectoralis major or minor no one cares the name of it right doctors care about the name of it right. orthopedic surgeons care about the name right. of it you you care about the name of it to take a test no one else cares about that so he all he did was repeat exactly what the what the client said to him back to him and he was like all right cool so part of the part well, of the corporate the, and, fitness game was knowing the game well and uh I, I don't think it's ryan's defense but ryan was a he's a good trainer he was because his clients didn't but get because hurt. he was a great guy yeah he was that's great, why he was, was a good, great guy yeah his clients didn't get hurt, and they enjoyed training. Right, and that's like, is it worth it for me to spend sixty five dollars an hour to listen to talk to you and to get some workout on the side and to make sure that like my fucking arms don't fall? Yeah, off, like right? I don't get too, too hurt with this. Dude. Right, right. Like, and that's really like I I have this measure of like what I let people train my mother. You know what I mean? Right. But that's right, the right, that right. would be this that would be the you know are they gonna hurt her? Are they gonna entertain her? And does she feel like she's getting value? Well, and you know at the mean? same time, like there was way more. You know, people had all the letters and NASM this and one, two, three and CPT and all the stuff or whatever. Yeah. And how many, Ryan was full. He had a full client list. Yeah. And you Ace, got the guy with five certifications who had 
who was always sitting at the desk, yeah, calling intros, calling new people, or whatever. Right. And so it was just, it was just like, it's like when you graduate high school or college, do you want to be the guy with straight A's or do you want to be the guy that experienced a lot of stuff and passed with C's and B's? Well, I mean, it really, it, it really comes back around to what you were saying that you, you could build a gym, mm -hmm. but it's a great, you have a greater impact and you'll have greater impact on people's lives by building a community. Well, and I'm not, I'm not hating on 24. No, I'm it, not hating on 24. It taught me everything I need to I, know. I, it, it was my, it was college. Right. It was my college mm -hmm. for my career. That's exactly what it was. It was college for opening our gym. That's exactly but, what it was. It taught me how to, to move from this personality to this personality on an hourly basis. Um, and it also taught me how to read people really well. Like talking like communication. That's all it is. Communication. I, and I, and, and could, would you say that it helped along a little bit, it helped that introvertedness? Like you weren't completely, completely it, I, in a more genuine one. Like you're not faking being extroverted. Like you're actually being extroverted. Right. Like you're actually engaging with someone in yeah. that way. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it work moving to Austin was a little bit of a culture shock on its own. Cause I grew up in a small, small town, town and then Dallas, which is basically just a bigger version of what I grew up in. And then moving to Austin, which is, which is, you know, um, it's kind of its own Island inside of Texas, right. you know, everything keep Austin weird. It's, that, right. that's, it's for a reason. Right. Um, so that was its own kind of like getting used to and kind of getting on board and understanding the way of life and whatnot like that. But, um, yeah, 24 taught me how to, like I said, it took me about a year to stay or to, to, to understand our, like, it's way too much work to be the person that my 8 a.m. wants me to be. And then to be a totally different person for the 9 a.m. Yeah. I'm just going to be me and whoever stays, stays and everybody stayed. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, and it wasn't like I was a totally different person. No, I was just, I opened up more about myself and I, well, I, I used past experiences as, as, as tools to, as teachings. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean, like uh, there's a certain level of, um, when you, you're being your authentic self, that you're going to be vulnerable a little right. bit. There's a little bit of vulnerability. Sure. And I, I would assume, like, you know, you find that, like, you know, like in getting married and then, like, especially, like, in having your daughter, like, you know, like this little, like, you you, you don't want to lie about everything. You want to be honest. And and so, like, you have to be a little open right. to her. Is, is that a fair statement? It, yeah, it is. It is. And, like, <clears throat> I tell you what, like, life – you know, if we're going to start talking about kids and, and whatnot like that, like life, I went, you know, Tristan was born, Adrian gets pregnant, and I continue to live my life as is. Nothing changed for me until Tristan was born. And even for about two months after that, nothing really changed for me because I was so involved in training for this competition that I qualified for before she was born. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't just throw it all away. And Adrian didn't want me to. She was like, you know what? Like, you sleep on the couch. Don't get up. I'm going to either get up to breastfeed or pump. So either way, That's I'm awesome. getting up. So she was such a rock star when it came to that stuff. Um, and the first, I don't know about you, but like the first couple months of the baby's life, it, you're there for the mom more than you are for the baby. Yeah. You know, right? Like here, hold the baby, feed the baby. Cool. But like ate her breastfed for yeah, over a year. She, yeah, there's so a lot there's of very few plate. bottles. Yeah. There, yeah, right? yeah. The, the bottle at the evening time. And <clears throat> when I started having to become more involved, I went through some pretty tough, like, I, I guess you can call it like male postpartum depression. You had to drop a lot of that ego, bro. Dude, I had to drop, I had to re, like, you, figure you, out who I was. Hey, because she don't give a fuck if you're last. Zero, last, dude. You know what Zero. I mean? She, Zero. Don't, she don't care who you are. And to are. be honest with you, Adrian never cared about that. Yeah. I was bringing all that on myself. So I'm like, man, how am I going to validate myself? How am I going to feel a sense of worth, right? Because what I want to do, what I've been doing for the last eight or nine years is now like not really a thing anymore. Like it could be, but I always wondered what was going to pull me away from competitive CrossFit besides age or injury. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is what it was. Yeah. And it's a great thing. I'm glad it happened. Yeah. I almost wish it would have happened sooner. Sure. To be honest with you, yeah. like Tristan was born when I was 37 and I'm, I kind of kicked myself for not starting at 32 or 33. Right. And I'm not sad that it didn't happen, but I, I don't know. I would have started over. Yeah, not started over, but started earlier, I guess. Well, I, you know, I mean, to do to do this at like basically like forty five, you know, my path. One, I didn't know my path was going to be here. Mm -hmm. Like, I never would have dreamed I'd be here if you asked me like two years ago. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like it was tough, man. I would, I would, I. So back when Tristan was napping like twice a day. You know, and she would go to bed at like eight o'clock at night. Like it's, it's I would, it's I gold. was purposely staying home at the gym so I didn't have to be involved in like that because I was so used to leaving the gym 
and going straight into decompress mode. Yeah. And then when that was stripped and you have to go home and you have to be not only husband, which that was an easy kind of role to be. I'm not saying Adrian and I had tough but times. You, you but you that role has to be secure. Right. At the time you have a child. If there's any disruption right there between y'all as a couple, shit's already starting. It's on, making it way tougher. Yeah. Yeah. But I was I would purposely stay at the gym and be like, hey, Adrian, I got, I got caught up talking to somebody. I'm finishing up some work, yada, yada. A lot of the times it was true. Like when you own your own business, you can always find work sure. to do. But there was some things that wasn't weren't super, they weren't A priorities that they could have put push back. But I was finding myself doing them just because I didn't want to go home. I wanted to decompress at home and I wanted to be home and like my day was over. Not go home and give the baby a bath or put her to sleep or you, sing. You, you, or, were, you were fighting that. Ego. I was fighting it, man. I was yeah. fighting it hard. And then when I, I can't remember what happened, I just had to start embracing it. Like I was, I was anxious all the time. I was depressed a lot because I was still wishing that I had my old life. When looking at me, I'm like, Fuck, man, this is this is you now. This is where you're at. This is who you are. You chose this. You supported like your spouse and when y'all had this conversation about we're going to do this and now you're running away from it yeah you can't do that like yeah. grow up man yeah you know like like it sounds so cliche but like man up take like 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 live the role that you've created for yourself well look i i, I i've said this before the person that i was in my 20s and 30s but even before i got married um i would have wrecked a child like I mean, I was so selfish. Sometimes I, was, I still wonder I was, how we get when I was, I was I was narcissistic. Oh my like, god! Like you know the, the whole thing, right? And so somewhere in the last like three or four years, with everything that's happened to me, all that has kind of dropped, and then she dropped into my lap, and I was just like, "This is why this happened. This well, is why this path was given to me is for her." If you look back, like when you think of, I remember when I got my first trainer certification. At it was a place called the Cooper Institute in Dallas, and I went there and I was there for a week and in and out. And I was like, man, how awesome would it be to be a, to be like a trainer, and live a trainer lifestyle and you work out and have fun and chill. And I feel like as much as anybody else in Austin, you and I got to experience that kind of like rock star trainer life, absolutely at corporate gym. Like, and it was everything from the gym to partying and everything in between those yeah. things, right? It's like waiting tables a little bit. Like, there's there's those careers that you kind of have right. that. Where it's just like there's a very much big kind of party family atmosphere thing, right? But like, but even all, like when we were 24, you and I could have walked into any gym, any any 24 in the city, and people would have known hey, who we were. Yeah, hey, yeah. what's up? Hey, how's it going? Whatever. So I feel like we weren't just like we weren't just the trainers who did it for a couple of years and then got out of it. Like we dove so far into it, and and not only the training part but the lifestyle part. And that was hard to give up, man. We yeah. can we carried Adrian and I carried that up until the time we had Tristan. Like not necessarily partying, like we slowed down for yeah. sure. But we were we were like, Hey, you wanna go to San Antonio for the weekend? We'll leave on Friday at, at one o'clock and we'll come back on Sunday. Yeah, cool, let's go. Right? Um you wanna go you wanna go hang out till one or two o'clock at so and so's house and hang out with them and chill and party and and and, and you know that doesn't happen anymore, man. Well, but I will say, you know, like that lifestyle was that freedom still is hard to let go of. You still think about it. it's it's way easier now because you kind of left it behind. You know what I mean? But, but I, it, there was probably two years where I was like, man, I miss that. But y'all still that. like y'all 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 still do stuff. Like we have we, we're lucky, man. Because yeah, y'all yeah, folks are here. Her yeah, sister's yeah, yeah. here. My folks are here. So, so y'all go on here. vacations by yourself. And we were kind of we were getting into this right before we yeah. started of like that I think that y'all do a great job of you know taking her and doing things with her, but then also understanding like mom and dad we're not dead like we didn't have a kid and died sure. like then sure. we got to go do stuff and de decompress and have fun and stay up till two in the morning and realize I'm too old to well, do this and like I don't want to have hangovers anymore and I'm yeah. done drinking or whatever else right, it is right? Right, right right you gotta you gotta do that when you're older too well and it's it, like Edgar and I have been very good at like keeping the the spark going for sure what however you want to interpret that we've do, we've done all the all the ways right um but like yeah we'll take tristan on vacation with us and that's a trip man those are trips yeah you go you, you, it's not you the leave, same you leave her you leave her and this is gonna sound bad but leave her behind but go on with those trips you're talking about to like reconnect with your spouse or 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 you know if you happen to not be married you're 
girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, whatever it is. Right. Like you need that that's undistracted time for that other person. And we'll we'll do that. And our so usually the trip we do every year is so like we're big snowboarders, we have to go snowboarding. We'll do a group trip, mm-hmm. right? With me, Adrian, Tristan, and then two of our other friends and, and their kids. Kiddo, they've got yeah. a kid that's, yeah, like, yeah. that's a few months older than Tristan. So we'll go and do that. But then Adrian and I usually go for a long weekend later in the season and it's it's great, right? Because you need to give you, that you, person whatever. Because you get into ruts in your marriage. You gotta kid, nurture. Man. Like I texted Adrian today, I was like, Hey, you wanna make out tonight? Like and I'm like, Man, like what's like this is like I need to text her this or whatever, just because I don't want to forget to tell her in person or whatever, but you're almost like when's the last time we like made, made out. out like when we first started dating. Yeah. And maybe I know. You know what I mean, though? Like, but, like, it, it, it's, you know. Uh, you got to keep it going. You got to, there's effort involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like. Um, it's work. If, if if you can catch ruts anywhere else, a relationship is no different, right? Right, right. And and if you don't, like, if you're in a rut and you just get comfortable and stay there, like, you're going to fade. You're going to, you're going to dissolve. But you could say the same thing about eating, working out. Like, yeah. you know, you have to be actively involved in being better about what you eat, what you drink, how you rest from a health standpoint sure. and with your spouse. You got to take care of yourself. Yeah, you, in every aspect. Well, I, I, um, you know, we were. We were to the point to we we were we've always been focused on health and stuff. Adrian's been more of the driving force behind the nutrition and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And in the mid twenties, dude, you don't worry about that. No. But now that you're you're in your forties, for me it was like late thirties even. Bro, I have a five thousand dollar water machine. Yeah, I mean like, yeah, like, like obviously con- yeah, you're concerned. Obviously, about I'm water. invested. Yeah, you know what we I mean? moved into our house, and the first thing Adrian and I started like looking into was like. It started off as a uh, water softener for mm-hmm. our house, but then they're like, "Man, we can add this dechlorification system to like make less chlorine in your water." And we're like, "Boom, sold!" And it was like, "Yeah, we spent like a ton of money on this yeah. thing." And we're like, "Man, this is boring," but at the same time, I'm like, "I'm so glad I have that thing," you sure. know? Yeah. Um, but like, you know, you and. and and it's just like you start spending money and you start focusing your efforts. Your priorities change. Yeah. Right. Adrian said something fantastic to me today. And we were talking about, you know, a friendship that we had <clears throat> in the past that, that, you know, we were super close. And now it's kind of like a cu- another couple. Yeah. Another okay. couple with a kid. And through no fault of anybody's own, we just kind of grew apart, really. Right. Um, their lifestyle, our lifestyle kind of changed. And, and Adrian's texting back and forth with her. She's let me read it. And she's like, you know, it's evolving. And, you know, Adrian's like, it feels more like it's dissolving rather than evolving, right? Evolving is a change to me. You, you, it's a change, but in this particular instance, it was a change. It was, this is a one-sided friendship, it almost felt like, you know? Um, well, you, you gotta, so it dissolved more than evolved. So what I'm saying is I think you've got to evolve and not let things dissolve marriage included right right because if you don't do anything about it, if you don't go with the change if you don't roll with it if you don't make a concerted effort to say hey we're not the same couple we were in our mid-20s where it's all fun and games and and you go off and do your job i'll go off and do mine and then we'll you know netflix and chill every night or whatever like right. that doesn't happen anymore right right but you gotta you've got to roll with it and keep that keep that thing going you know you've got to evolve with with your life, with your kid, with your wife, with you, with with everything you do. Well, I mean, you know, it's like we could we could apply it to just about anything, right? You could apply it to sports. Sure. Tom Brady has to evolve. LeBron totally, James man. has had to evolve, right? You know, like evolve their games. Like you have to, like, um, you might not have the crazy sex on the balcony sure. on Bourbon Street anymore, right? right. But you can, you know, you can throw beads on your wife in the bedroom. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, you may not need that high. Anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. But right? it's like, you, but you, but it does take effort. It does. It right? does. You know what I mean? Right? And and I and I and I I commend you because I feel like that that balance of of being a dad and being parents um, with her and then uh, of y'all having y'all's own time, it's very obvious in the way y'all are when you're with her. Well, and, and because, also, because you're happy. Yeah. Because you like, you've gotten a break at a moment. It's you know, at times like, cause like you, you ain't gonna like everybody all the time. No, not even not. your family. You're, yeah, for sure. Pr- like imagine moving back with your parents right now. Oh, you, you'd just be like, you'd be like, just shoot me now. Well, right? or we, also like for me moving back in with my family right now, I'd feel like, man, where did I, where did I, what, what, what wrong <laughs> turn did I take? Yeah. Like I'm 40, you know, my dad's retired. Uh, my mom's retired. They're both retired. Like last thing they need is a forty year old coming in, like trying to live his. And and, and yeah, I, I totally go, go, get what hey, you're saying. Do your parents still live in your hometown? 
My dad does. My mom lives here in Austin. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, you go get with your dad, hang out with your old buddies that are still shooting around 3,000 people. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, like, and I t to be honest with you, man, most of my friends from high school, my closer friends, they did move back to hometown or, or something similar. Yeah. You know, um, and it's just, it's different strokes. It's different. fun, man. It's, it's, I tell you what, like once I, st once I accepted the life that I'd created for myself after Tristan, I started having a lot more fun. Yeah. Stress went down. Exactly. I still get stressed for sure. sure. Like, um, and again, there's, there's meditation, there's breathing techniques I'll use for that. Um, but you really, prayer, you, I'll use all this stuff. You, you, you realize, I mean, you realize even in the, in that moment where, your your whole ego and persona is now going to be different. Like you're not that same land that like you're not, not dead. Yeah, right. You're, you're like not I dead. Can, I can be a new. But I'm not trying to be that person anymore. Like I'm look, not trying to be the person I was five years ago, three years ago. Look, I can't I can't dunk anymore. Right. So I need a spot up right. jumper. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I it's okay. Learn something new. It's right? okay. And it's fine. Yeah. I mean, Michael Jordan didn't win all his championships dunking. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right. Um. So usually what I like to do when I wrap up because believe it or not, we've been here about. An hour and a half. Can you no believe kidding, that? man. That's crazy. Dude. Yeah, yeah, like it's, yeah. It, it just flies, flies right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, and we've talked about this already a little bit. So, but I usually ask people, like, what are the things you do to help, like, you know, like moderate your life, like take care of yourself? And and we've already touched on it some, but just kind of give me an example of kind of the, the routine and the things you do to rest, recover, balance around the stuff we've already talked about or stuff we haven't talked about. Yeah. So, man, for me, like, I'll, I think, a lot of health and fitness and recovery comes from sleep. Yeah. So I'll try to be lights out by 10 o'clock. Last night, Adrian and I went to bed at like, we got in the bed at like 9.15. Do you keep a very tight schedule on your sleep? No, not really. Like if we're like, we, like if you go, do you, would you stay up and watch a movie? We don't really watch movies because we fall asleep. Okay. Right. But we'll watch like TV shows or games or okay, so whatever like that. Like we'll watch TV, right? Do you get but, the same time every day? Uh, no, I, I, listen, our kid are you, gets are, up. Are you, are you trying to just get, I'm a, never going to sleep later than seven. Okay. And are, are you just trying to get a certain amount of sleep? Generally we'll shoot for eight. Okay. Last night I end up with nine. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, you're, we'll, but we'll you're try setting to, your whole setup. Yeah. We'll yeah. try to be lights out by 10 and cause we know like the earliest I'll usually wake up is six. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and on a day where I don't have to be at the gym till a little bit later, I won't even set an alarm, but I know I'm going to wake, wake up, up seven. at seven. Yeah. So, so I'm going to get my eight or nine. Um, and then, so one of the bigger things I do to, to just continue feeling good every day is I don't, I don't work out super hard anymore. Yeah. Like I do certain things that enjoy me and I'll push limits, but like if I'm not feeling good, I'm okay back. You listen off. to your body. I listen to my body. Exactly. Yeah. Cause it will talk, it will it, tell you everything. And, you and you, and, and there's a difference between just being lazy and actually being tired. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not like, I'm no, but I'm saying I, that's a, you have to know your body well enough to when you're just be you're just like I'm fucking lazy, right? Or legitimately, my body feels run down. I can't handle the volume today. And I tell you what, though, it's easy to be lazy. Oh, and yeah, it's great too for yeah. for for three or four days when you don't do anything. Like if you're on a deload week or even sometimes an outright rest week where all you're doing is stretch and mobilize, vacation, vacate. Yeah. yeah, like it's fantastic. Um, but like right now, I'll do CrossFit three times a week. Doesn't mean I'm doing nothing those other days, but I may do isolated lift or skill lift or stand on my hands for 30 minutes or something silly like that. Yeah, I'm active. I'm, yeah. I'm still moving. I'm not sitting on a couch and and you know eating Cheetos playing Tetris all day. Yeah, I don't know if everybody still knows what Tetris. I was about is. to say like yeah, who the fuck's, who's playing yeah. Tetris? Who's playing Tetris anymore? Um, <laughs> My mom. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'm not a gamer, man. It's not my thing. I've never been. Hey, well, at, Tetris, like, Tetris is an overall reference that most people might get. If, if Mario Brothers. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, my the extent of my game was Adrian bought me a PlayStation because I wanted Guitar Hero, and we like no kidding. We played like six hours one night. Woke up the next day, like our legs were so sore because we were like power stancing and like hammering this thing or whatever, and we were passing guitar back and forth to each other. We only had one. Right. Yeah. This was this was long ago, but um. But yeah, man. So so I I I quit drinking alcohol. Not that I was an alcoholic or anything, but I just stopped. Um, I'll uh, I got real big into CBD for a while, um, and I think that it wasn't really my thing. It didn't really. <clears throat> I don't know if it. You didn't it, notice the difference. I, I, don't, I didn't know. The, I don't know if the problem. Maybe I, maybe my expectation was too high. Yeah. Um, but I was looking for it to be like a super a super sleep or whatever yeah, yeah. I was using it for. But whatever. Um. 
but uh, breathing has been a big one. Breathing, meditation, and kind of zoning out. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, prayer. Like I'm, 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 I'm religious. I'm, I'm you use that, Christian. You, I believe in that stuff. Do you use that as I, a I, form you, of meditation? Yeah, totally, man. Every morning in the car, I go to an app, and I'll, you know, it's it's guided. And and if it's if if it's prayer that comes to you, great. If it's if it's just breathing that comes to you, fine. If there's no there's, you're not like bounded or uh binded by you have to pray during this time or you can just breathe and most of the time dude i don't even listen to music in the car i listen to music all day at the gym it's in the background so on my 25 minute drive home from round rock to liberty hill man i'm just kind of like decompress mode yeah but it's like box breathing four in four hold four out four hold stuff like that um yeah so it's just there's just just like being able to sit and do nothing has been one of the hardest skills I've. I've, I've I, I can see I'm that. still trying to learn. Right, but because and my kids the same way. She's like always amped up and trying to do something. Do and you ever? Do you, have you ever tried to get her to like meditate or sit still with you? Or anything oh, like that? I don't even try it. I don't even try. Well, it. I, I mean, I, I was just curious. I was more curious because like I, I haven't tried it. No. I, I think about just like when I'm with my daughter, trying to be as present as possible, and I feel like the calmer I am. The calmer she is. She totally feeds off of us. And Adrian and I are pretty high energy a yeah. lot of the time. Or we have been, and she's seen that. So, like, it, like for example, like when we play hide and go seek, she can count to 10. That's about it. And then all the numbers, just she'll go back down, and there's no order after 10 or whatever. <laughs> but, like, she can't keep her eyes closed for 10 seconds while I'm off. So, like, she'll be like, two, three, <laughs> four. And she's like, I know you guys can't see me, but I'm just, I'm wide open eyes looking at everything yeah, yeah. as I'm playing hide and go seek here. And I'm like, no, you're supposed to like, like bury your face in the pillow. Like, go hide behind the teepee. Go hide behind this chair or whatever. Um, and really, what I'm trying to do is say, hey, don't like, you're cheating. Don't cheat. Like, yeah. I'm gonna beat you at this game. Like, I will beat you. Right? Don't watch where I hide. <laughs> right? Because I'm gonna hide in such a good spot, you'll never find me. But what we found is that like, when she'll be like, hey, let's go do like family movie time or whatever, five minutes, and she's playing toys. Like, she wow. just can't. She won't focus on. It. She'll watch her little shows, and. You could scream at her and she won't even. It, are y'all, are you, do y'all worry about devices? Are we y'all regulate even? it a little bit, but it's hard. Um, man. It's real tough. She'll watch her iPad at night when she eats dinner. Otherwise, she she just almost doesn't eat, right? Yeah. Um, or it'll take my, her. My nephew's it'll take her, It'll take her an hour to eat. And Adrian yeah. and I are like, we've been done for twenty minutes, and we yeah. don't want to not sit there with her. And some like we'll usually try pretty much every night. Like, hey, let's just sit and eat or whatever. And if she asks for it a couple times, or if we get done and, and there's stuff that we need to do, we'll do that. But we, she probably is limited. She probably gets about an hour screen yeah. time a day, it, it, uh, it, morning and night. But sometimes it's necessary. Like we need to get ready in the morning to go, and she's like. You know, hanging on her leg like a koala bear. Like sometimes you're like, "Hey, let's go watch Thomas or right. whatever." You know, whatever's on TV. I mean, you know, like I think it's not true. Not but, whatever's on TV. Be like, like a, a balance. Like, like I think about like devices and things, and like right now we're not posting her picture like yeah. on the internet and stuff like that. And so I just think I keep thinking about the future and I ask a question a lot about like what parents do around devices because you have. to. It, it you have to find some you have to find what works for you and what's a balance for you. Well, so so you're talking about balance here, right? Because like, in school they're gonna have like iPads. and they're stuff. They're gonna like, be issued an iPad. Right. They're gonna be issued so, a, some kind of some kind of computer. So you something. don't want your kid to be like, what this dot dot. You know, how do like, I work this? That, that has no idea. That, you, you know, you want to have some idea of how to use that, but you also want to go, hey, we need to have a healthy respect around what this is used for and when right. we use it. And, right. and it sounds like that's kind of what y'all are doing. Anyway. Well, we yeah. stop. We don't let her watch kids uh, or YouTube kids. Mm -hmm. Because it's crazy. She'll start adopting the behaviors that she sees on TV. No way. And if there's nutty shows that people are just flying off the wall, she'll be that. She'll become that, right? She'll try to start doing that that stuff. It's nuts, man. And we're like, no, let's go back to like... um, And for the most part, we'll let her pick. If she's in like Netflix Kids, we'll let her pick. And if we see it, we're like, no, we're not watching this. We'll just block it or whatever. Um, But... um, yeah, I mean, we're, we'll we'll watch it, we'll control it, we'll manage it or whatnot. But I'm also, like you said, like I like to watch TV. Yeah. I get it. I understand the stimulus. Yeah. I like to watch cartoons when I was a kid. Yeah. Like I'm not like it's kind of hypocritical for me to be like, no, we're not going to do this. But I also I also want her to be active. I want her to be outside, and she does that stuff yeah. too. Like if we're like, no, nope, no iPad, she may be like, no, I want to do it. But then we're like, why don't you go jump on a trampoline or play in the the bounce house outside yeah. or something like that or play on the playscape or something and she'll go do this she has no problem and she's really good at like i hope this doesn't go away but she's good at like entertaining herself 
I think it's awesome. It's great. Like she doesn't need to be. She she enjoys when we play with her. But if we're like, hey, we're gonna go downstairs real quick and make dinner, she'll be like, okay. Um, and we're like, do you want to come down there? Do you want to bring toys down there? Or whatnot? And she's like, and she'll make that decision or whatnot. Right. Or whatnot. And then she'll like face first sled down the. Well, stairs, I mean, yeah, like yeah, I was talking yeah, about yeah earlier. He, he had mentioned that she was doing some face first sledding down the well, stairs. Well, and but you know, you you I yeah. think you said something. You're like, you know, like I, I want to be aware but i don't want to be a helicopter parent i you know you got to find a balance there's going to be mistakes and accidents and and once you accept those you realize that like hey if i just kind of do the best i can yeah. to balance this as much as i can and accept these small bumps along the road like everything will be fine well and so have you like have you done those have you like dropped your kid yet oh yeah like not like not drop drop but like i mean she's taking like emergency room drop no 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 not that bad yet so i did it and and through no fault of my kid's own, she's like, she got the scar on her chin now. People are like, oh, what happened to your chin? Daddy dropped me. <laughs> that's her answer. And that's the, that's the honest to God truth. But like, the truth is we were playing in the parking lot and she'd like run between my legs and she was like, no, you're supposed to, she wanted me to like grab her with my legs. So she then goes into the Superman pose and I'm like, hey, you're slipping. I need you to put your feet down or your feet down. She's like, yes. So I'm like, I can't like, really turn to see. So I, I loosen my legs and boom, straight on the, the asphalt. And she's like, you could hear, and she kind of come up and she was like, wasn't crying at first. And then she was like, starts freaking out crying. And then we see all this blood and we're like, man, we can like see the chin bone here. So we had to go and like get it glued and taped up and all this big news. But, but now she tells a story. It's like, like I'm a scumbag dad who dropped her or whatever, but like, it's going to happen, you know, like well, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like getting busted, you know? drinking beer in high school. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I need you to run 25 miles before you play the next make, baseball yeah, you, game. So, yeah. uh, so I yeah. need you to run 80 miles before she turns five. I'll have that done by tomorrow. Cause I'm going to be, you know what I mean? That's how much I'm, yeah. that's how much we're chasing out, out after her, you know? And it's, and it's very different. Like if now if somebody said, like you said it to me, you're like, bro, when do I start? How long do I have to finish to get that, to, to do that? Um, because you're doing it for a very different reason, Yeah, you know? And you ask about balance, like the balance in my life is very, um, it's, there's a fair amount of self time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody gives himself enough self time. I don't know. It's hard to get. It's your, hard because you've got you got a, you got a you, wife, a kid, a business, yeah, and and there's so like many other too. things. Right? But once you start saying, "Hey, this," it, it doesn't have to be all at once. You don't have to go spend a weekend by yourself, but. 10 minutes, three or four times a day, your workout time. There's times at the gym where I put my headphones in and it has nothing to do with the music that's being played or whatever, but like, I'm like zoning out. Like, if you want to come talk to me, great, cool. I'll, anybody, but like, interrupt me. I'm cool with that. Totally fine. But I've got my headphones in, not because I don't want to be interrupted, because I'm going to get every 10 minutes of me time that's possible because right. it's pretty far and few between. Right. I mean, it's as easy <laughs> as you can just spend 10 less minutes on social media and just 10 more minutes sitting outside with your own thoughts. So how often are you on social media? I don't know. The, my iPad, you know, how it says like your percentages go up and well, down. Well, because it's in the background. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, is that what it is? I, I well, I don't know. I, I would say I spend an hour or so a day. Maybe. Between Facebook, Instagram. No, just probably just Instagram. Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. So we, so we have pages for, for, for the gym, right? So we're kind of have to be on there. But... And that's kind of like my thing too. It's like doing the podcast and stuff. That's I had I had COVID and I was at home for two weeks, right? And <clears throat> kept scrolling. And I got to a point on Instagram where it's like it's all ads, and it gives you this, like you're like, at the end of Instagram. It, it literally it says that it's like you you're up to date. You've seen all the you've seen everything posts. there is to see so far. And I don't follow a ton of people. Like there's maybe two hundred people that yeah. I follow or whatever. And of those two hundred, maybe even half of them actually post, post, right? So, and I'm like, man, this is a lot or whatever. And I'm like, what am I going to do here? Like, I'm sitting at home. I'm up quarantined in this room by yeah. myself, away from Adrian and, and, and Tristan and whatnot. But so I took it on my phone, and and I tell you what, like, you have some little withdrawals. I was, no, I was the exact. I was so happy. There was no negativity around. Like, but did you find yourself wanting to go back things. to do it? Like, did you find yourself like, oh, I'm going to get on it. Oh, I don't have it. Like, did you like? Where you're like, I'm going to get on Instagram, and then you realize, oh, like, I don't have it on my well, phone. Well, I didn't really – I just deleted the app from my phone, Yeah, right? yeah. So um, – but then I knew when I went back to work that I was going to have to put it back on there because I do a, a weekly video yeah, yeah. and all this kind of stuff or whatnot. But um, it was nice to not be on it. Like, I felt calmer. I felt happier. I felt less anxiety to answer someone's message. And and, and you bring that on yourself. Yeah. No, it's – they're sending you a message. They're not saying, hey – you better answer me right now. Right. Same thing with texting, right? right? Like you get people got to remember that their phone is for their 
convenience, not for someone else's. Right. And I think I, I get caught up in that all the time. Right? right. Especially if you value customer service with the product that you're selling. Like somebody texts you at, you know, 930 at night. I used to answer that. Now I don't, I don't look at my phone after about 830. Yeah. And, and you got, hey, you got to have hours. Bro. That's it, man. So, yeah. so, so that kind of balance is kind of where I've started. It's, it's to boundaries, find right? It's, just, ba- it's exactly yeah. what it is. It's ba- my balance comes from boundaries. Yeah. Right. Because if I'm at home, like I want to be spending time with Adrian and her kid, right? Or, 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 or watching something mindless, some mindless crap on TV. Or, or like just I'm okay with doing that. something for myself so I can be better for you tomorrow. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like if 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 I can't get up and be a better version of myself tomorrow, not only for myself, but for all the people I care about, including the members of the gym, then, then, then what am I selling? Right. Him? What am I selling him? Right. right. Am I delivering the same product today that, that I was yesterday? You're not, was it, you're not being your life. authentic self. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, well, my man, how did you feel dude, about this? It was great, man. It was, and you're right, man. It but goes this back is, quick. Well, dude. it's like, I would say we probably, we probably hit the 140 mark or somewhere yeah. around there. So, but it was just kind of going so good. I was just like kind of letting it go. Let's roll, man. So, uh, right. So but, I hope uh, people like basketball because if they don't in the beginning. Well, I mean, you know, pause. just like if you made it this far, just, yeah. just like, yeah, I mean, thank you for going through all the basketball stuff. Right. You know right. I mean? it's, right. It, it, right. But it's all, it's kind of like what we said earlier, man. That's, that's kind of like. I think that gives people a little bit of our relationship too. So, you know, I'm not just like, like well, yeah. you know, basketball, I know basketball. And it's not like we're just in here. Like well, we, and then we didn't talk about the box. We didn't take about, talk about basketball the whole time. No, we didn't. It's, in the grand scheme of things, it was probably like eight minutes. Have you, have you, um, I don't know if I call this an interview, but have you done a podcast with anybody who you're not like friends with? Yes. Is I've done, weird? I've Is done it a different, uh, Is it I scripted? Mean, I know. No, 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 no. Uh, I've done podcasts with people that are like friends of friends. Okay. So I know them and their acquaintances, but I, I not a, I, I would say even as much as we know each other, we don't hang out on a regular basis, sure. right? And I know you, those people I knew even less than right. I knew you, right, right, right. right? Because I've actually hung out and stuff with you before. These people maybe hung out with them one time. And so um, it's not that it's scripted. It's just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm providing a platform when you come in you know, it's, it's your, you, you, it's, it's real easy to be great. Just tell you what, like man. I said, I told you, you'll know all the answers to right. all the questions. Cause right. I'm asking you about yeah. you. If you don't, know if you don't, them, if you that's, don't know them, that's, that's your, a whole that's different, your crap that's a different out. podcast. Yeah. Well, so like, and, and I, I, I guess I could ultimately say like, if these microphones weren't in our face, if the camera wasn't rolling, I would have enjoyed this conversation equally as much. Just you and me here catching up. Well, and, and I you think know, as much as anything, I think that speaks a lot to like, again, the authenticity of, of what's going on here. Well, and like I have really learned to enjoy just the human connect, just talking yeah. to another person in kind of an environment where like, you know, you ain't looked at your phone. Right. I ain't looked at my phone. Right. Right. And that you're kind of trapped. You're, you're tra- captured here in my garage. You got to talk to me. Sure. You know, sure. and so like it gives me a chance to like really kind of talk to people, ask questions, explore, maybe bring up stuff that other people experience and, and maybe someone gets something from it. If one person got something that would be, Awesome, right? You know what I mean. Right, right, so, um, but yeah, dude, that's all it takes, man. Is one person ripple yeah. effect doesn't have to be gigantic, no nah. little pebble or a giant stone. Well, I mean, if a a, a, a ripple ripples out, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. So if I make a small impact, maybe it impacts somebody else, and they do the same thing, and it carries mm-hmm. on, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, a bunch of people know you that don't know me, right? right. And might listen to this. And might get something from it or learn something about you they didn't know. Sure. Or find value in what I'm doing and go, oh, well, listen to the rest of these things yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So, like, totally, you know, man. like it's totally. all about kind of what effect can I have on my circle? How can I affect people that are just right around sure. me? Sure. You know, um, like we get caught up in the, the huge big picture of everything goes on in the world and the internet. But if you really want to make, I think, you, like, again, your gym community, if you want to make your life great and other people's lives great around you, right? just do it. Just concentrate on here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That'll yeah. affect there. If you, if those people go out in the world, they, they affect, you know, they affect those people there. Sure. Right. Well, but it's and it, and like you said, man, it starts like, if you want to change your life, create it. And it's usually about by, by looking in the mirror and, Create something different did you just inside quote yourself. Michael Jackson, did man in the mirror, like I, make listen, the change. Listen, <laughs> not on purpose. I know, and, and, and that's no dig at Michael Jackson. I like plenty of his music, but I was that's not where my mind. I, was I know, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, man. But but yeah, it's true, man. Like it's 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 if you need something to change, man, change yourself first. Yeah, you know, it's it's the one thing you can change, right? It's the one thing you have control over. That's right. So awesome. Well, hey, dude, let's yeah, man, let's hug this out. Absolutely, bro. Man, I feel like.
Appreciate it.